What's up, YouTube? What's up, Spotify and Apple Podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk Show. Uh, I am Alex, aka Reef Talk, and with me, as always, is Ryan from the UK's number one coral selling website. Ryan, how are you? PrestigeReef.co.uk. Ryan, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like a, a quick rush at the end, then, wasn't there? There always is. I did, we, it was, we've been chatting for too long. And yeah. I, I suddenly, well, you suddenly realized you didn't have a drink, and I suddenly realized I didn't have a beer. Yeah. And I've just realized I haven't uh, shut my uh, blind. So not good. Just, not good. Not good. You've got to feel, Ryan. Oh, how, no. How have, you, how have you been this week? How have I been this week? I have had, actually, it's been a quite a good week in reefing for me. Um, I have finally set up the automated water change system on the water box tank. Uh, so my RO container is now 600 liters. And the best thing about it, so other than the fact I only have to fill up sort of every three months, mm -hmm. uh, the best thing about it is that it's now silent. So you know everyone who has these little auto <clears throat> auto top ups, and you hear the yep. every sort of hour. I haven't heard it for the last day. It's brilliant. <laughs> if only I can get my um, my roller mat, my reef mat, to stop making that <clears throat> noise. You can do that. Can you? you? Can well, kind of. You can set it so. It has a quiet time. Yeah. So you can say between 10 a.m. in the morning and 10 p.m. at night, I don't want to hear it. And then it'll just, at, at 10 a.m. in the morning, it'll just revolve an entire day's worth of, of, uh, of roll. Really? I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how well that works. I've never tried it because it noise doesn't bother me. It's quite quiet, yeah. but you can do it. Hmm. I also have a confession to make. Those of you cool. who have watched the, um, our live streams for a long time, there is one thing that I always say about your videos, isn't there? What is it that I always you say about it? your videos? I don't <laughs> watch awesome. them, correct. And yesterday, like, I have to confess, I watched your video on the Tunzi Auto Top Up. And it helped. And it helped me. <laughs> yeah. And then I sent you a message saying, I just watched your video, and it helped. Yeah. And I, I'm surprised that this wasn't more common knowledge. Or maybe it is more common knowledge. I just haven't watched many videos on it. You can undo <laughs> them. And you can turn the, the box, dial, yeah. can't you? you to can make turn it, it up. Yeah. So you, you can increase the um the pump speed. So because the barrel's mm. now outside, it wasn't the pump wasn't strong enough to get it in. So yeah. I thought, oh, I have to get another pump now and it, and it's I've got to connect it somehow. Mm. Um and I watched your video, opened it up, turned it up, works. Job so done. yeah. So thank you very much for being the UK's number one YouTuber. Yeah. You are welcome. But and that's number, the, that's the number three social media person. <laughs> exactly. But that's the thing about so that video that you're talking about was called Watch This Before You Get a Tansy Osmolator. And it talks about it's, it's, it's noisy, which most people don't talk about. Yeah. But, and so uh, on the face of it, you might think that that video would put people off. But I bet I bet it um, makes more people buy it than it puts people off. Well, it definitely made so, me happy. <laughs> exactly. It makes you happy. It helped that. And yeah. I don't think those videos put people off is, is the point. So anyway, I digress. Um, so you've uh, you've got uh, your pump fixed. Yes. So, so the, pump is, the pump is fixed. Uh, the RO, so the auto top up is now, as I said, is in a 600 litre barrel. So I have to hardly ever uh, fill up. It is connected to the coral farm with a, <laughs> with a, a tube of airline or yeah. like RO tubing all the way down to the end of the garden, all the way the long, and then into the roof of the coral farm. And then literally all I have to do is <laughs> unplug um, one tube that is where it's going into the barrel in the coral farm and then plug in the second tube and it'll fill up the other two barrels. So the ultimate in laziness. <laughs> yeah. I still, that, it, the, the, the fact that you've got um, uh, salt water out there in particular yeah, just I just don't like that idea because the, the temperature swings throughout the year. It'll get up to thirty plus degrees because it's in a black container. Yeah, and it'll go down to five six degrees in the winter. Yeah, that's no, got to no, affect. Not. That's got to affect the the parameters. Because mm, even like, it, BRS did stuff, and I, I've not watched these for a long time. But they did um, uh, videos about how to store. You can store salt water for years. Well, not for years, but for ages without worrying about it. Yeah, but they always say as long as it's in like at room temperature. Yeah, but I'm not storing it for it. So the obviously the RO will be stored for a long time because, as I say, it'll be stored for up to three months. Whereas the other one that's doing the automated water change, it's if I'm doing twenty percent on a thousand liter tank, that's two hundred liters every week. So every week. I'm going to be twenty percent a week. Bloody hell! Well, you know, some of us are like proper reefers. I even <laughs> do 
I even do that on the coral farm. It costs, okay. it costs me a ton of money. It's like pour, it's like pouring money down the drain. <laughs> so it'll be every uh, three weeks. Every three weeks, yeah. So I don't know how bad it is going to be. Someone has, well, not someone, James in the comments has actually made a very good point. The RO tube will freeze in the winter. However, that does not matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is because it's irrelevant. Wait. And the reason it's irrelevant is because the a hose which connects to the coral farm that supplies the coral farm with water freezes anyway. <laughs> so it's going to make no difference if the tube freezes because if the tube freezes, <clears throat> the hose is, is frozen as well. Um, so can, what's the plan? <laughs> it doesn't. Well, I've. It doesn't. <laughs> firstly, it doesn't freeze long term usually in the UK, and I. I've been do, having it three years. It's not been an issue. Mm. If I leave the water on, so if I keep running the RO, it doesn't freeze because water that's moving doesn't freeze it. It, it. It's harder to freeze basically. Um, so I'm just doing a lot of water changes at that point. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's never been an issue in the last three years. So why would it be an issue now? Is my theory. Fair enough. And remember, this is for me to be lazy. I can always just like do it manually, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter if it freezes in the, at the end of the day. But Happy we shall days. see. Actually, I have just realized something. It might matter. Okay, it is going to matter. This is why it's going to matter. The auto top up is going to freeze. So it's not the line that goes from the coral farm to the, to the, to the yeah. barrels that's the problem. It's the auto top up which will be the problem. So I might that have might to crack it as well if it freezes when it's full. Yeah, but is, is it? Do you think a six hundred liter barrel is going to freeze? Mate, I've seen lakes freeze. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they're more uh, than six hundred liters. <laughs> I know. So, and look, I understand that, but just put some salt in it, and then it'll fix it. it True. <laughs> Remember, it's not that cold here. It, it usually is it. It's not cold in the UK. No. How often bloody, is bloody it below freezing for long periods of time? Not for long. To be fair, not for long periods, but you yeah, know, there'll be a week I, or two. It, it oh, sounds right. in the. It's making me look like an idiot, but I don't <laughs> think. I think, as I said, in the last three years, it's not been an issue. The only thing that might be an issue is if the auto top up tube freezes, and then and then that will be an issue because that was going to be That's running important. intermittently, isn't it? Yeah, I just I just don't like it. It's too too much risk for me. I don't like no, risk. All that's going to happen is the <laughs> is the um the water will drop and then the vector will go and then i'll know something's yeah. wrong and that's it so or you'll because it's in uh, uh, uh in winter you'll be in australia for six weeks that's true that's, <laughs> that's true and i'm like alex can you come help me <laughs> yeah no. um and les makes a point about lagging do you know what lagging is yeah yeah i i <clears throat> as a as I said, I don't know. How, I, I think it will be worth lagging that section, definitely. Yeah. Um, but with regards to lagging the entire run, I don't think it will make much difference because if, if it's frozen underground, it's going to be frozen. The pipe's going to be frozen anyway. So, look, if I have to once a year for a week or to like manually top up the tank, I think I'll survive. <laughs> Well, James is looking forward to the My ATO Has Frozen video in the winter. <laughs> oh, don't you worry. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there you go. And, there you go, uh, pond heater. Job done. Put a pond heater in your cat. Out what? Put a pond heater in your cat outside. That, I presume that means. <laughs> or cat. Could be cat. And won't freeze then. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, whatever. Uh, cool. So you've got um, six months before you've got to top up your, your RA freshwater reservoir. Yes. No, six Happy months, days. three, three or four. Mm. So three months. Fair enough. But I love Job it. And I said, sometimes these plans, these ideas don't work, but we'll see. Uh, and it was, uh, it was that. Michael Peachy yeah. says, in Ryan's cat, a bit harsh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a cat. The other one with no. cats. Love cats. Uh, you need, do you like cats and dogs? Uh, I, I don't have uh, cats or dogs. I grew up with dogs. Mm -hmm. um and I, yeah I don't, I don't mind them i just don't have them there there are a lot of responsibility remember i go away for long periods of time and although yeah. a coral farm is a lot of responsibility um a, a dog's like a day-to-day -day care although marina wants one so you never uh, know there might be a dog turning up soon you know what i'm like yeah. She, yeah she should just get one it's easy to get forgiveness and permission i always say so uh, yeah i'll remember that yeah indeed um <clears throat> all righty well so it's, get, it's been getting a little bit hot in the uk here there's, yes. We've not quite hit the point. There's been a heat wave and there's been a heat warning. and But this yeah. seems to be like there's a weather. There's, there'll be like an amber weather warning if it rains for a day. Yeah. And it's like and like it will be uh, it'll be it'll get to February and it'll get cold and there'll be a weather warning. And you're like, 
it's cold it's february that's so that's what we expect so i don't really understand why there are weather warnings and all this sort of stuff but yeah. it's been a bit hot this week but not mental hot so i don't think we've yet got to the point where people will be in the chat saying oh my god my tank's overheating it's got to 30 degrees there'll be some people yeah but the answer is i made a video on it on my reef talk extra channel uh, how to call your aquarium uh and there are the the, the ways that uh the, i think you, the best ways to do it are and you're going to say aircon which is the right answer yeah <laughs> <laughs> but the way the way to do it if you don't want to use aircon is close all your curtains and your windows yeah um and open your your cabinet doors and put a massive the biggest fan you can possibly get blowing across the top of your your tank the little hobby uh, aquarium fans like this one hang on yeah you should also use you should also use Ted Baker um, boxes yeah, yeah, yeah. to put up your windows so that your neighbours know you buy Ted Baker because that's what when, you do, isn't it? When it gets really hot, yeah. really hot, yeah. I put white cardboard on the outside of my no, windows. No, no, not white cardboard. This is Ted Baker cardboard. Whatever, so this whatever cardboard I have to hand. Non, but, not sponsored. Not sponsored. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, th these little so these are the little hobby fans you can get. This was twenty quid. This did actually this. I have two of these and one of them broke my heating controller this week. I plugged it in and there yeah. was a little puff of smoke and my DD heating controller broke the second I turned this on. So, and these yeah. are one of these cheap Chinese things that I always wonder about the, the electrical safety with these. Yeah. But anyway, these are actually surprisingly effective given yeah. how small they are. They do do a decent job. They take the edge off. But if you get a massive fan, I've got a hydroponic fan. It's like this big. Yeah. It's amazing. They're so, so good. But basically, that's the that's the way to deal with it if you've got overheating. And there was someone on the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page. By yeah. the way, if you're not on the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page, we've got a page. You can flag news articles. You can post your tanks. You can post questions. Cool stuff you see. Pictures of fish, all that sort of stuff. And we'll talk about it. Uh, so someone posted that their tank got to 29 degrees. What, so at what point do you start to panic or would you start to panic if what point do i start to panic temperature well, obviously <laughs> i have air conditioning in there so mine stays perfect all but if the you time didn't... so if it goes up even slightly i'm like why <laughs> is this not working <laughs> um so i i've actually had a tank i think at 28 <clears throat> this was a soft coral tank i think it was a 28.9 or something like that um and then i would that's that's too hot as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Although I don't, I don't actually know what the official line is for what, like deadly, if you see what I mean. I don't think there is like a, a, a mark, a point where if it gets to 28.2, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. Where, but 28.1 is okay. I think it's like a sliding scale and different corals will react differently, all this sort of stuff, different tank. Yeah. But if it gets to 27, I'm like, oh, definitely, yeah. that's not good. If it gets to 28, I'm like, right, there's a problem now. I can't get any higher. If it yeah. got to 29, which mine never has, but if it got to that level, yeah. I'd start to think there's a problem. But yeah. at the same time, I've done scuba diving, and you might have done as well, in that kind yeah. of temperature before. So in theory, it shouldn't be a problem. And temperature does fluctuate throughout the day in the wild. But yeah. the reality is, if it gets to 29, 30, you might have stress issues. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's hit 29 uh, last summer and didn't lose anything uh but 28 plus is the point uh it's when michael starts touching cloth <laughs> the the thing is it it's it takes a long time to warm up and it also takes a long time to cool down as well it's like a, mm -hmm. an accumulate it, like it, it doesn't come down immediately does it so it will no. stay at that temperature for quite a long time yeah um now i don't know if that's good or bad because if you think about it in theory it's good because yeah. if it's not going up and down really it's quickly nice swing, yeah. it's yeah it's more stable but i haven't had that problem I have air conditioning in the house, <laughs> but only in the room with the fish tank, not anywhere else. That's, that's I don't funny. care about me. Is that deliberately? Like, yeah, genuinely. Yeah. Is that I for ventilation it. as well? Does it work? Uh, no, it doesn't do ventilation. It is a little <laughs> bit humid sometimes, but if the air comes on, you don't notice it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's funny how I don't care about myself. I don't have it in <laughs> any room at all, except where the fish tank is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I've just realized my main fan in my room is on a bit high, so you might be able to hear blowing noises so i'm turning it down. the only thing that people should be aware of is that when they're using um fans is it causes the water to evaporate more that's how it works yes. so just be conscious that you will need to if you're especially if you're not using an auto top up and you're doing it manually you a lot more fresh water will be coming out of the tank yeah so i made a video today about the tunsy aquarium cooling fan yeah. and i didn't mention uh that there are a couple of things i didn't mention but i thought you know what I don't need to because it's it's not a how-to video. It's about the fan, but yeah. it work. Yeah, it evaporates and it evaporates fresh water only. 
Yes. So if you've if you're not replacing the fresh water with an auto top up, your your salinity is going to go up, and that's yeah. going to be even more problematic than a, a, a temperature spike. And 100%. if your temperature is going up as well, double bubble. Yeah. Nicked good, as the Germans say. Correct. Um, but there were there was what a couple of people were posting on uh, on Ultimate Reef. Uh, was it Ultimate Reef or was it the Facebook page? I can't remember. I saw somewhere. Let's just pretend it was the Facebook page where everyone I think it is was the Facebook all the time. Page. Yeah, yeah, it's the cool place where the cool kids hang out. Uh, some people said, "Oh no, you need to have your windows open and all this sort of stuff." You don't. Windows shut. Um, if it get if it's cooler outside, then absolutely have your windows open. But you'll just yeah. let warm air in otherwise. Anyway, uh, oh, and one last question on the point of heat. Ah says fans in the sump versus in the display in, in the sump i have a ventilation fan to to ventilate my uh, sump and yeah. before i had that the sump was sweaty and my tank temperature was always higher in the summer so that helps but yeah. what you really want is the fan blowing across the top of your water and your display tank correct because it's the right. widest surface area and it's it the cooling effect comes from evaporative cooling Mm. So you're not actually blowing cold air onto the tank. You're blowing just room temperature air onto the tank. But the movement causes more evaporation, and the and the evaporation is, is what causes that cooling effect. The heat energy dip goes with the evaporation. Correct. <laughs> yes. So you want to you want to do it on the biggest surface area you can get. Indeed. So there you go. Science corner with Ryan. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, who knew i knew all this stuff <laughs> ryan science corner we don't need mike paletta we don't need sanjay joshi no we've got ryan with science so. well uh, anyway on that note we'll move on to uh the uh, member questions and facebook questions. wait 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 well i don't know about your week in reefing we've done mine we haven't done yours I don't know if I've done anything really exciting. Have I done anything exciting? Not really. I had on my flu Evo, I've had um, generally it's going fine. I'm taking it very slowly, but it's generally it's going fine. People keep asking for an update. There's one coming in the next few weeks. I've been slack on the updates, but th uh, this week I've had um, this annoying slime on the surface uh, and it's disappeared for, I don't really know what it did. I think it's disappeared. There's a little filter sponge that you can see there. Yeah. And I think it was that that took away the the, the slime, the, this oily stuff on the surface. But it was there yeah. for I don't know a week. To, it's been there a few times, and I've tried blasting the um, the the surface with flow, turning my return pump up even higher as well, and that's helped. But it just disappeared, and I think it was because of the little filter sponge. But I don't really know why. But it's it's annoying. I think it's I mean I've got patches of cyanobacteria. Yeah, and it must be connected to that. I might have dinos as well. I think it's just cyan. But it's not a problem. Well, you're a YouTuber. You're meant to have none of these problems. <laughs> I know, right? But the, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, there's, but the thing is, so with that, there is, I had Sino in there a little bit bad, not too bad before, but it's mostly gone. There's still a little bit, but it's fine. I've had a couple of patches, not a problem. Yeah. So it's it, that's like, that's the sort of thing where you just don't panic. It's like, it'll probably sort itself out. <laughs> On a normal display tank, you all you need to do for that oily f film is to it, increase the water Surface volume so it goes yeah yeah well no, no so it goes over the weir because the weir sucks mm. all the weir sucks all of that oil off and brings it into the sump and then it gets processed by your um your protein skimmer i don't know in that tank because it's not it hasn't got a sump yeah well so, it's got a little rear chamber so and there is a there is a little weir comb is there a drop yeah very what you drop. want you want there to be it should be dragging that off over the drop and it should yeah. collect in that compartment that, that's i think it does i think it goes into the filter sponge you know i think that's what sorted it but the filter sponge yeah. has been there all the time i haven't put in activated carbon um yeah. i did a water change did i do that before or after i can't remember but anyway but that's but i've not i bought a couple of cars i've been buying lps lately i bought always buy a change, but... changed man <laughs> but i've been buying i bought a bubble coral and another a really nice gunny this week mm. uh from reefkeeper moss end and i saw a really nice torch coral i'm not going to say where i saw it in case someone goes and buys it um but um i didn't have time the shop was too busy i didn't have time to ask the price so i need to go back in if you have to ask the price it means it's a lot <laughs> maybe but the, 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 it's usually it's, how it works <laughs> it's aquatic emporium in shepparton which is an excellent shop by the way it's in uh east surrey west london-ish okay. a really good shop but they don't have prices on a lot of stuff yeah so you've got to go how much is that how much is that so yeah um which is generally normally fine but if you're in a rush it's like oh, okay so I'll have to go back in again, but that's no hardship. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, but there's there's my view. I don't I haven't really got much to report. But do you know who has got stuff to report? Who? The members. Oh, okay. Uh 
Although we, to, let, let's let's come on, hit me with their questions. <laughs> no, well, we got one question this week, uh, and but it, I, I like it a lot because he ends it saying um, that you are the two smartest, best-looking YouTubers ever. Well, I mean that Which definitely is... applies. That definitely applies to one of us, and I'll let you decide <laughs> yeah. who that applies to. <laughs> Indeed, but and that's that's another that's fact. That's like your science facts earlier. This is refacts. So nice. yeah. Uh, and this is from Peter. No wonder people always say we're so humble. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is from Peter Callis, which I think is how you pronounce his name. Apologies if I've stuffed that up. Uh, and the question is too long, so I can't actually post it at the bottom of the uh, the screen. But yeah. he says, last week, Ryan said he installed a 600 litre container for his salt mix and RODI. Is yeah. it OK to store RODI outside as I have a 100 litre butt for my RODI and already see some life de developing in there? Ooh. I don't like that at all. I do drain and dry it completely now and then, but today I've invested in fresh salt mix with Hannah. It shows 0.4 phosphate. Wow. There you go, Ryan. You're about to have pond life. <laughs> where, where is it going to come from? It's in a sealed container and it's black, so it can't even grow algae. Life uh, finds a way. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd get us that. Look, we'll soon find out. We'll soon find out if it was a, if it was the right or wrong thing to do. But I have faith in my crazy ideas. Um, so we I wonder, shall see. So this guy's got a hundred liter water, but I presume it's not transparent. So with no light, I want uh, maybe maybe you need to put a water pump, a water pump in there to because stagnant water is not good. But where's the phosphate going to come from? Uh, it's, it's, so it's not, it's not magic. Ah, uh, that's a point. Nothing. It might be the one container. You you've probably yeah. got HDPE containers, or I got the same container I use for the coral farm. Yes, it's right. a, a special special like one. I, so I had a, um, uh, when I had a freshwater tank, I had a, 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 I can't remember what it was, it was a bin with a hose pipe in it. Yeah. And I always just thought it was fine. I just used that to transfer water. One day I tested the nitrates in there. Yeah. That, like they were so high, I had to report it to NASA because no one had ever spotted nitrates that high before. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and I suddenly realized that it was the con it was either the container or the hose. Yeah. And not all containers, not all plastic is reef safe. Yeah. If it's food safe, it's reef safe. So that's normally... LDPE or HDPE, which is high density polyethylene. I think that's the one I've got, the HD yeah. one. H and that's solid. LDPE, low density, it's like wobbly, but the yeah. HDPE is solid. You want to look for the little um, triangle of arrows and it should say HDPE. So I wonder if that's coming from Peter, that's coming from your container or something in your container. But there you go. I've just said Ford Escort has just said I'll be fine because he's basically doing the same. So hey. There you go. I've had one like person. You don't do it in the winter, yeah. I've had one person agree with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. That is it. I'm now. I'm now convinced. <laughs> and we all know the internet is the best place for you know facts. So. Yeah, yeah. Self reassurance is what the internet's for. You look for re uh, to reconfirm <laughs> your, yeah, yeah, exactly. your your own ideas. <laughs> Confirmation bias. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Someone else said it. Uh, but that was the uh, the comment from uh, from the members, uh, and there were a few things. Uh, from the uh, from the Facebook page though, so there's a there's a couple of things I wanted to show you. First off, I'll go with the questions. First one was from Michael Michael, and I don't think that's his real surname. But he says, when feeding your fish, do you simply feed the same food daily, such as mysis, or do you feed a varied diet? Now I'm going to give my answer first because it's the wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. Because I only feed mysis. It's all I feed ever. Almost. Yeah. Sometimes I might mix it up occasionally, but 99% of the time it's mysis. You do it properly and you mix it up, right? Uh, I do. I feed a mixture of mysis, pellets, and nori. Yeah. Um, they, there is, a, not all mysis is created equally. <laughs> so what you want to do, get, get, do this today if you're using mysis. Uh, do, do, do you know what mysis you use? Um, it comes in an orange packet. Ocean oh, nutrition? Orange. I think that's the one I use, I think. But basically, if you if you, if you put it into a little pot and it's not whole pieces of mysis, it's all like ground oh, up, gooey, yeah, like different pieces. That's not the stuff you want. You want the whole pieces of mysis, and I think it's I think it's Ocean Nutrition is what I use that, as well. Gamma is what I use. Ah, uh, no, packs. no, that's the TMC one, isn't it? Um, yeah, they're like I'm not they're, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That could be this, just this same. is fine. I've had before. If I so this I get from Reefkeeper Moss End, and it's good. I've yeah. had the stuff you're describing before. Yeah. from uh from maidenhead aquatic shops yeah it's like mulch it's horrible oh yeah that, so i don't use that my it's funny because i changed my the, my local fish shop changed the food um that they were selling 
And so I used a different MySys, and all of a sudden, none of the cough brands would eat it. They're like, nope, we're not eating this rubbish. That's <laughs> stupid. My so God. I had, I'm not even joking, I had to order, I think I ordered, it cost me like 80 pounds. I ordered like 40 packs. Right. So they've always got a, a supply of them. So my freezer, it has three drawers in it. The very bottom drawer, it's just full of fish food. Full. Yeah, my top drawer is pretty much uh, full of fish food as well. But Yeah. It's... Um... Uh, I think we never we. I don't think we appreciate our partners enough when, know, yeah. when, <laughs> when you when you think about things like this. And the so I used to I, I went through a small stage of using um what's the stuff copper bands like mastic. Yes. And the stuff you can either uh, get it in the little uh, up, little yeah. um paste ready made stuff that you just push onto the the glass or yeah. it comes in a powdered sachet. Yeah. And so you have to mix it up yourself and that stuff stinks. stinks. I'm yeah. sure it's better. And you know, fresher for the for the fish, but yeah. it stinks. And, and you have to wrap, you have to make it all up. You make have to make up a batch, and yeah. then split it out. And I put it in little um, tin foil um, sachets. Yeah. And it makes the entire. If you put anything else in that drawer, it'll smell of uh, fish food. Uh, fish food, yeah. I know. It's like, oh, God, it's I don't use that anymore. I I do no, use mastic, but I use I use the pre-made mastic stuff. forty. I think it's called. Yeah, something the like that. Yeah. Nubbins. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's um, not cheap though. Huh. No. I think that one of the biggest expenses for the coral farm is feeding the fish. Think, but that, so, go on. Oh, I was going to say, if you think about, like, uh, the biggest expense for me, obviously, is electricity. And then I'd say salt is probably second. And I reckon food is probably third. I um, suppose that, sh that should be the way it is, to be fair. But I wouldn't have, I've not thought about that. Yeah. You would have thought it'd be supplements, but you use um, bulk bicarbonate and stuff, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. But you should do. I've tried other things in the past. The, the part of the reason I don't, I only feed my sis yeah. is because I've got a copper banded butterfly and that's all he eats. Yes. So I have to feed that and I have to feed three cubes a day. If I feed less, he gets thin and he's, he's already not fat. So really, I could ideally feed more. Yeah. But that's all he eats. So, well, I might be able to train to eat other stuff, but that's all he eats. So I have to feed at least three cubes of my sis. I don't really want to feed much more than that. Yeah, but if I was going to, I've tried. Have you ever tried seaweed extreme pellets? No, it's nori pellets, and I love the idea of that because nori is a pain in the ass. It stinks. It makes your fingers smell. It, I quite it, like the smell of nori. Half the time you put it on and it'll just disappear off around the tank and go down the weir box or whatever. It's just it's a That's pain because you don't have enough tanks. If I put nori, yeah, in, yeah, it's, it's gone in like twelve seconds. <laughs> This is this is true, but um, but it's I don't like uh, so I like the idea of nori pellets, but yeah. I've tried it for about a month, tried chucking it in, and yeah. no one eats it. You might yeah. get one or two pellets go, and the rest don't like it. So, have you, nice so idea. Have you tried the the mastic for the copper band? Uh, I tried it at first, but uh, he didn't really go for it. But I like so, the idea of putting some in for because most fish like it. But. You should buy a little pot of it. And what I do mm. is I cut them in half because then they last longer and you don't need to put a whole one in. Mm. Um, and then the copper bands, they definitely know. It's almost like they can smell something. They go over it and they're like, yeah. they're really interested. And when they see the other fish eating it, fish definitely learn from each other. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they will, generally speaking, they will most, they will go for it eventually. Some yeah. people try it. They put it in on day one doesn't eat it and they go oh it doesn't oh, yeah. doesn't work for sure yeah you've got to you've got to try longer but it's it's quite a messy food as well not not in with the um not because the, I, I mean in terms of nutrients well i mean as in so i've i've, I've used the mastic 40 i stick it onto a rock or the glass or whatever yeah. someone will peck it and then just it'll go poof yeah, and yeah, it'll yeah. go everywhere yeah. and get wasted but it probably is worth doing but the the short answer michael is michael michael <laughs> so good they named him twice is um that you probably should feed a varied diet i don't because it would mean feeding too much food and my yeah. phosphate is already crazy as it is so. <laughs> but while we're on while we're on the topic of diet stop feeding brine shrimp people should not be feeding brine shrimp to their fish <laughs> it's like eating cardboard <laughs> it does yeah. it does have one benefit if a fish is not eating the most likely thing they are to eat other than something live is brine shrimp um, garlic brine shrimp <laughs> yes but it's not nutritional for them I mean, the hobby survived for years on garlic brine shrimp. Oh, sorry, not garlic brine, on brine shrimp. So it does it, it. It is okay, but you're absolutely right. It's not as nutritious. Uh, yeah. But I also sometimes, if I get a new fish, like I bought two little pipe fish, like they're blue striped pipe fish or orange stripe. I can't remember what they're called. They're not yanzis, but they're tiny. Yeah. And I started feeding uh, my, uh, brine shrimp, 
because the mysis was like <laughs> it was like trying to eat a melon yeah, so, yeah. Like going, rah, rah. <laughs> so uh so i started with that but in the end i switched switched back to mysis yeah and they just they find a way i don't yeah, know they, they do just, yeah i don't do anything special i don't know if i pick if they pick bits up or whatever but they're, they're alive three months later John so, John Wright has just made a, a, a technically true comment. Baby Brian Shrimp, which are less than 24 hours old, which are live, Artinia? are good. Yes. Uh, well, Artinia is called? Brian Shrimp, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I always, I'm always nervous when I say things like that because someone comes along and goes, uh, actually, it's not, <laughs> it's not the, quite what you're saying. Well, that's um, why I said it as a question. <laughs> no, so I, I believe Artemia is Brian Shrimp. Um, yeah. But baby Brian Shrimp, if you hatch them yourself, are nutritious for, and people often <clears throat> feed them to newly hatched fish. Um, usually it's Rotifers first, and then they'll move on to Brian Shrimp. But they that's lose. What sea monkeys are. Yes, yeah. But yeah. it, they, the nutritional value is in the egg sac. I believe that's correct. It's basically right. that's why within the first twenty four hours they become less nutritious because they've used up some of that nutrition themselves. Right. Okay. I think that is correct. Fact, science, facts with Ryan. Who knew I knew all this? Because I didn't I know need, I knew all this. I need a jingle for science facts with Ryan, so I can just press a button. It'll be like science facts with Ryan. So, uh, or it could be go. it could be made up facts with Ryan. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but there you go. So that's um, um, uh, do what uh, Prestige Reef does. Don't do what Reef Dog does. I should just get rid of the copper band, but he's just such a cool fish. Yeah, yeah. Plus <sighs> the yellow about tasia back because it's yeah. all in your weir and it's everything. In, yeah, it's it. in the, it's, oh, the weir is like ninety nine percent aptasia. It's like it's, a forest. Yeah. It's like a jungle. And, and you've got rats, so you can't even have um, Bergie and Nudibranch. So no, as soon, as, soon as you, yeah. as soon as that fish goes, you'll get them back. But, exactly. Uh, you pay your money, you take your choice. Next question is from Stephanie Wright, who, and I love long nose hawkfish. God. <laughs> she says, long nose hawkfish, wondering what the opinions are of those who have kept them in terms of temperament, reef safety, hazards with cleanup crew, and other concerns. Have you ever had a long nose? I've never had a long nose hawkfish, so I'm going to leave you to answer this question. However, yeah. when you said long nose hawkfish and you went, yeah, I went, because uh, I, like I just don't. I don't know. I think I've, because I've, maybe because I've never had one, I don't. They're like a personality fish, yeah, aren't they? So you, so you have to have one to know their personality. It's, okay. it's they don't do a job and they don't really swim yeah, around. Yeah. They sort of just sit there. So you, I think you have to have one to know what it's like to have one. If you see what I mean. Okay, I see. Well, so I love them, they're, and the, you get you do get mixed reports. And and actually, the, the full version of this question, I had to cut it down; it wouldn't fit. The full version of this question said, um, look, "I get I've read a, a lots of research online, and different people say different things. And the reason for that is not all hawkfish do the same. <laughs> My experience with them, I've had one for five years. I'm pretty sure I've had one more. I've had a few scarlet hawkfish. I might have just had one long nose. I've had him for five years. He's he never eats anything he shouldn't do." um he he's peaceful he doesn't eat shrimp I've, I've had him in with cleaner shrimp the cleaner shrimp are still around i've had him in with snails with crabs i wouldn't trust him with something like a, a pom-pom crab or a um the sexy, sexy shrimp. shrimp yeah yeah <clears throat> but i mean i wouldn't trust them with wrasses with pretty much anything True. so uh so my experience is that they're actually they're fine but it's a it's a, another one of those where you th you roll the dice because you might get a bad one who's like, hmm, that cleaner shrimp looks rather delicious. Yeah, and all the, the, are... the, the uh, sorry. The, so the look, the, they've got relatively big mouths. No, I, I paused. They've got oh. relatively big mouths actually, but they can't eat a cleaner shrimp whole. But that doesn't matter because you'll you'll read reports of people online saying they'll peck at them, pick pick the legs off, and then they'll go for yeah. the head and all this. I've never had anything like that, and even when my harlequin tuskfish attacked and ripped apart one of my cleaner shrimp the hawk the long nose hawkfish wasn't anywhere to be seen my scarlet yeah. hawkfish was hanging out going oh can i eat some of that as well but the long nose yeah. was like mate i'm all right i want some yeah, the long nose didn't want to get eaten same as the jawfish <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah oh poor jawfish anyway so yeah get one because they're awesome but uh but it is reef safe with caution because uh fish don't read books fish don't watch reef dog videos like ryan Yes, I'm your like newest, biggest fan. I've spent all day watching all of them. <laughs> I know, yeah. But mine's been totally peaceful. He's in with two other hawkfish, a, a scarlet hawkfish and a falco. They're, they're really peaceful. He minds his own business. He actually hangs out with a scarlet sometimes, which is cool. Um, he's cool. I would, have you seen I would one have of those gold hawkfish? Yes. I think the, you need to yeah. get one of those. That's your next fish. 
I have seen one. So it's uh, I did a video of a, of a guy who had one in his tank. Yeah. Uh, and it looked awesome, really bright colours. Yeah. But I've seen it since a couple of years later, and in fact, here it is uh, looking bright. That one. Oh yeah, it's bright. Really bright. A couple of years later, looks a lot drabber. It's interesting. Lost, lost a lot. Of... And You've that's, lots, that's lots of fish like that. That's what I was going to say. So my my yellow wrasse is really dull now and my silver belly yeah. rass is really dull was when you see them in a the shop where they're small that you they're like you can see them from space they're so bright yeah yeah <laughs> um but there you go and final question from uh the facebook page was anthony holland what advice do you have to cool the water down or do i uh, simply have to buy a cooler the answer is we've talked about that already actually <laughs> the answer is buy a cooling fan yeah uh, i mean chillers do work but they're they're big chill, and... chill is great but they're expensive and you have to vent them outside otherwise they don't work yeah and this is 20 quid for this boy you won. It's yeah. not the best piece of equipment in the world, but given how small it is, it's surprising how effective they are. And it might set fire to your house too. Might, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> but if you're insured, that doesn't matter. So, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm about to get sued because I said might set fire to your house. Just to clarify, that was what you said about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Did I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always, yeah, anyway, whatever. <laughs> But there you go. So cooling fans. I, I wouldn't bother with a, a chiller person. They're very expensive and you probably use a lot of electricity, I would guess. Uh, yeah, I, I assume they would. I actually have a chiller that I need to sell. It's never been used, but I've got one upstairs. Ooh, buy one off Ryan then. Yeah. Who, the who needs a chiller? Like exactly. very hot weather coming up. Get in, get in touch. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but buy a small cooling fan. I've actually made a video review today on the Reef Talk Extra channel of the Tunzi cooling fan. It's expensive, but it's good. Although, actually, it did surprisingly similar to that poxy little 20 quid Chinese fan. I did yeah. a test. I was amazed yeah. how close it was. Uh, anyway, um, so there's the answer to that question. And there is, that concludes the Reef Talk, the, the, que the press questions from the Prestige Reef Talk show uh, Facebook page. But yeah. it does not conclude what I wanted to talk about from the Prestige Reef Talk Facebook page. <laughs> Prestige Reef Talk page. Prestige Reef Talk show Facebook page, um, because there are a couple other things I wanted to pull out. First up was, do you know a guy called Zach? First off, hang on a second. Amir Amir. Amir, 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 Amir. Thank you very much for the super chat. Five dollars says, great job, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Great job. I try my best. Well, well done, Alex. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Amir. Um, Zach, do you remember a guy called Zach Harrison? I'm going to say yes, but no. Thanks for accepting me. Love the show. Learned so much as well as uh, Ryan's consultations, which have helped me get to my tank to where oh, it is. Nice. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. I, so I didn't realize it was, I thought it was someone who was just in the comments. This one. Do you recognize uh, that tank? I actually, I think Zach has had actually a few corals off me as well, I think. Okay. But, but yeah, so I, I remember reason... I, I, I've done about 20 consultations yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah, week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's hard to remember everyone. So don't be offended, Zach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason, so uh, the reason I wanted to pull this up was because this is uh, a soft coral tank, which you don't see that often. Yeah. And they're all massively grown out and it looks yeah. really cool. That's like soft corals aren't my bag, but that looks cool. And it shows you that even uh, a coral, uh, a tank that's not full of sexy LPS that costs 500 quid each can yeah. look really cool, especially yeah. when grown out. That looks like proper natural, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that, I, it's um, I definitely contemplated having an all soft coral tank mm. before I had the angels. So because it's in the house, I want it to be easy. I've got a coral farm with SPS and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know. I just thought it'd be nice to showcase them. But then I went for the angel fish tank instead, which will probably definitely eat co soft corals. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna start getting into putting corals in that tank soon. One thing, he's got Xenia, Look. <laughs> yeah i don't think i sold him that but it's possible Triggering your anxiety i love seeing you it's so cool um but there you go so uh, a nice big old soft coral tank well done zach it's, it's nice to be appreciated it's nice to I, I actually hadn't seen that comment so thank you for showing it because it's it's difficult everyone that i do a consultation with before i go into them i have no idea if i'm going to be beneficial for this person or not now i have i offer literally a money back guarantee and not once has anyone really? accepted it Okay. So, so I might I might book one and then uh, you get one absorb, every week for free. Absorb <laughs> all your mind. knowledge and then just get a refund. Be like, no, you were you were crap, mate. <laughs> Don't know so what you're talking about. I I literally love doing them. I love doing them so much. So yeah. Anyway. Okay. Next tank I wanted to show was this one from Ryan Anderson. Nothing. Yeah, I like that tank. 
looks you very like sleek. Tank? So for a start, I mean that, that that light is quite big. That looks a bit too big to me. But I didn't notice that. But for a start, it's a, a reasonably big tank, but it's completely empty. Basically, a couple of fish. Yeah, looks like a couple of um, uh, sea fans or sea which or gorgs, gorgs. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and a couple of maybe fungus. Not many corals in there. Yeah. But the reason I wanted to pull this up, look at the plumbing. I know. That's, that's, <laughs> I think that's why I liked it. It was almost like a showpiece. Yeah, I know. And this is like the least important thing because all that matters is how your tank looks. But look that at looks. Look at those look tubes at the top. I know. Look at the straight lines and wow. the, all the organizing clips. Everything's red. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's fine until you need to until you need to get something out. <laughs> That's exactly. the problem. But look, he's got he's got his um, UV plumbed at the top with unions there, so he can just undo them and pop them straight out. I think he's considered um, uh, access nut sort of thing. Yeah. So that, that is a that well thought. I w I'm assuming there's probably panels that go on the side of it, but it almost yes. looks like it doesn't need panels. <laughs> oh, that looks a bit like an aquarium connections tank, in fact. Oh, is that about it? But uh, oh no, uh, Nuvo something that uh, might be different. But anyway, it just it, I just like the um, the the plumbing. I like the I I that's cool. also <laughs> not that's not a brand new system either. Because if you look at the skimmer, the skimmer is like full of crap. So of it's not like it was set up yesterday. That looks like it's been running for a while. Oh, I think it's a couple of months old. I would guess. Let me have. Does, does he does he say uh, innovative marine one one two X build in progress? This is the fourth tank I currently have running. You see, he's got Achilles in there. Uh, oh God. Has he? Yes, oh, he has. Yeah, oh, Ryan, you lost it. It's going to die. It's going to get white spot. It's going to kill all your fish. That. Don't say that. <laughs> I like the killies as well. But his so. plumbing's cool. So, anyway. <laughs> but, they, yeah. but but this I uh, guess that plumbing caught my eye, and that that like caught like a lot of people saw that on the on the page as well, because plumbing it does it really doesn't matter because yeah. who cares what your plumbing looks like? But it's cool. <laughs> uh, I think good. there is there is a thing for like where plumbing for some people is a big deal. Yeah, when, when yeah, they wanted yeah. to look really properly fancy i am yeah. not one of those people if you <laughs> you'll see in the in the latest video so remember i said i filmed a video but not edited and put up yeah. i'll put it up tomorrow probably what i've done temporarily with a uv sterilizer where it's balancing precariously <laughs> on the baffles of my sump i'm not even joking I, it actually is <laughs> i did so on my water box i had um dino flagellates yeah. and you're, when you have that you're supposed to run uv yeah. into the, the the display tank not in your sump Okay. into the display tank so i a real janky setup ghetto yeah. setup and it was like dangling off it was cable clipped to the um to the light bracket and all this yeah Same mine as literally looks like it's about to fall into the sump yeah so... oh, i tell you what did you see um on, on instagram uh, uh telegram's uh page post earlier on i haven't but Let me show, so you, you might not notice because this this was i noticed this but i bet most people didn't but he posted this. Uh, here we go. So he's doing a water change on this. Look at the jug. It's propping up his lid. That like, I was, I saw that. I was like, no, it's going to fall in. Oh, the, the top, you mean? The jug? Yeah, oh, I, see. Yeah. I was like, it's... I thought you were talking about the blue one. I was like, no, that's no, just no. the jug. No, no. I saw that. I was like, oh, mate, don't do yeah, it. But he's a man I trust. So if he's doing it, I'm going to start propping mine up like that. Exactly. And actually, so there was... I. Um, so pre uh, prestige reef <laughs> uh, telegram is someone you can trust when it comes to well Everything. anything basically but certainly when it comes to products and stuff he yeah. said he's checked he's checked out the uh parwise can't remember what it's called itc parwise it's the new senai reef only it does spectrum as well yeah he's tried it out and says it's really good so i think i'm going to get one because my i've got a, 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 a senai par meter yeah but it's a bit basic and i like the idea of checking spectrum so i might buy one of those at some point i've got i don't know if, i've got an apogee which you can obviously borrow if you want but i don't Ooh, know if interesting they're really yeah. good they're a lot of money those they're like proper ones but I'm... i was ah i was gonna buy one of those actually i forgot i just realized i didn't buy it but yeah um, just, just let me know whenever you want it you can have it so sounds very good and the last thing from the uh, prestige reef talk show facebook page which you should all join was uh, was uh, an unusual pest, or well, not really a pest, hitchhiker sort of thing. <laughs> that I wonder if you, 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 I bet you all know what it is. <laughs> so hang on, let me play the video. You see the little circled bit at the bottom, and then on the top video, they're like the little hands. Them. Yeah, they're like little. Yeah. Um, uh, I you get them in torch corals reasonably frequently. I can't remember what they're called, but they're like this little hand that comes out. And just, can you see I, my comment below? Looks like a barnacle. Yeah, that's why I think it. That's why I think it is exactly. But as well as it, why I said it. <laughs> oh, but they but they so that you see them from time to time, like you say on torch and that sort of stuff, and they, they're yeah. just these little 
they just do this sort of like filter feeders, aren't they? Little, like you say, little fingers yeah. that pop up. Uh, they're completely harmless. I actually think they're quite cool. Yeah, um, it's not it's not unusual to get one in the middle of a torch coral, some really... and like and then the polyps almost grown around it. Um, but there's obviously that's if you get a wild one, but uh, people panic when they get one. They're like, yeah. Oh, what have you sent me? What have you sent me? <laughs> but it look, it's like it's a, that looks not too dissimilar, not a million miles away from a vermited snail. Yeah, I see. Vermited are, are awful, yeah. whereas barnacles are cool. I like them; they're harmless. Yeah. I, I once had a barnacle that grew on the back of a snail, and every yeah. now and then you just see this thing come out the back of this snail's shell. Snail, like, what yeah. the hell is that? <laughs> but clever go. barnacle. If you think about it, it's it's moving around, so it's got. Yeah, it's exactly, got a, yeah. uh, Take me to yeah. some new food, please. Thanks. Exactly. Um, but there you go. So that is the uh, the the uh, the details from uh, the the Facebook Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page, which means we are now onto the keenly anticipated prestige reef fish of the week fish Ryan, of the week what have you got oh. for us see i like picking fish of the week which i know you're not going to like that much yeah. so but i also i'm trying to i don't want to just pick a fish of the week as i said before like a yellow tang i want to show people something that they don't see that often so yeah. i've gone for a swiss guard basilet this week um there are cheaper Basslets than Swiss guards. There are Swalsey basslets, for example. Uh, there are more expensive basslets than Swiss guards, like a, cat, like a candy <laughs> basslet. Um, I think in the UK they're about 180. I think was why it was 180, 190, I think which you is said a lot. Yeah. It's, it, it is a lot for a small fish. They they are usually you see them about this big, yeah. but I I had one for years. I put it in the coral farm when I first started, and then I just didn't see it again. For all I know, it could still be in there. Because they're one of those fish that you don't see every day. And I love fish that you don't see every day. Like a, because a, when a you see when them, you do. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. Hello, old <laughs> friend. So, um, but, yeah, they they are I, – I believe they're a reef-safe fish. They're reef-safe for me, but maybe not with things like um, sexy fruit. I'm oh, pretty okay. sure. Um, reef say, compatible, reef yes, says yeah. Live Aquaria, yeah. I wouldn't trust it with a sexy shrimp. Definitely not. They got these like quite big mouths. Um, but then again, I wouldn't even trust a Bangai cardinal with a sexy shrimp if you dropped it in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would definitely eat it. Yeah. Um, but I just think they they they're actually quite a an unusual. I don't think you get that many red fish other than a, um, a hawk fish. If you think about it. Yeah, flame angel. There aren't many. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I just thought it was really interesting. They're quite cryptic. They eat well. I don't, they're not particularly like prone to pests. And you don't see them that often, even in the shops. So it's nice to have a, like something that other people don't have as well. So that's why I went for that. Rather than I didn't want to go for a candy basslet, which I know you love and a few other people love, because they're like two and a half grand. And I, this is about not picking like the most crazy expensive fish. Yeah, uh, like a three hundred quid or hundred whatever quid for a um, a, a Swiss guard is a lot of money. But yeah. for this bad boy, the deep water candy basket, well, grand on a thousand dollars on live query. I think they're about fifteen hundred, maybe more in yeah. the UK. That's you, there's if you thought hundred eighty quid was a lot, you could, yeah. you could you could bring yourself to part with that, couldn't you? You might it might be hurt paying you, but if you sold a few cars, you'd be cool. Yeah, fifteen hundred quid difference. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not yeah. I'm not buying a fish, especially a secretive one. As cool as it is to have a secretive fish, yeah, I don't want to spend fifteen hundred quid on a fish I never see. <laughs> I will get one of those um for the water the candy basket no 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 oh. no no <laughs> you know you, you never know you've been encouraging me to get a candy basket for ages mm. but no it's very unlikely i'll get a um a candy basket but there is actually a different type of basket i can't remember the name um which is available at the moment but it's a bit big i want like a i quite like the small cryptic ones this is like probably this is like a few <laughs> quite a few inches so it's it's i'm not, not sure about it i can't think has made a controversial comment what is it? most rasses are red? That's actually well, I wouldn't say most, but that is actually true. That's not there true are, at all. But there it are says, a few. There's a few red most, rasses. Most female fairy rasses. Oh, there you go. Steralibus are red. Mm, I'm not sure about that. I'm not very good with rasses, so I even I'm something sure. like the Jordani ras is only part red, and you never see them because they're from Hawaii. There you go. See, I'm, as I said, I'm not very good with rasses, but I, when you said about most rasses are red, I thought flash of rasses, that's it. Red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just one. <laughs> yeah, the Nayoko rasses have got red on it. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, so there we go. That is the Prestige Reef Fish of the Week, which means we're now on to the Prestige Reef Coral of the Week. What you got? I have gone for Alveopora this week. Um, Alveopora is like an easier version of um, Goniopora. 
Oh, you got them on my website. That's nice. I know. This That's interesting because yeah. there but should be a banner. Are... There should be a banner at the top today because there's a twenty percent discount code today. But Here maybe we not. Go. Here's the sales but... pitch. These, these are all out of stock on your website, by the way. I think. Uh, yes, I, I've actually got colonies Sorry. of them. They just need to be cut. So. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Um, they're very got uh, Alvia Poor are very, very popular sellers, like very popular. Um, so they go, especially that pink one, that pink one sold out like crazy. So, because okay. most of them you get, most Alvia Poor's you get are sort of green. Um, are they easier than Gonies? I've never kept uh, yes. an Alvia. Yeah, yeah. The, the, to tell the difference between them, I believe now I might get the number wrong here, but you can count the individual petals on them. And I think it's tw it's either 12 or 14 for Alviapora. I'm pretty sure it's 12. And then Goniapora is double. So it's 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, You're not seven, listening, are you? Nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, it's so 12. 12. You were right. Yeah, yeah. I was counting. Yeah, so it's, it's 12 <laughs> for Alviapora and, and 24 for Goniapora. So if you're in a shop and you're mm. thinking, what is that? Because remember, shops do label things wrong all the time as well. Um, oh, 100%. It, it's not their fault. <laughs> remember, they'll get something in a box mm. of corals. It looks just like a golf ball. And then they'll put it in the tank and they'll write Alviopora next to it. The next day it opens up, it might be a Goniopora, and then they've forgotten to change it, if you see what I mean. Yeah, and shop will have a dozen staff, some of yeah. who are relatively new, some of who are more experienced. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's not a problem if that happens. It's just it's your responsibility to know what you're buying mm -hmm. rather than the shop's responsibility. I mean, it's, 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 don't get me wrong, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. both. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. <laughs> so but uh, the only yeah. thing so i don't really like alvies that uh, and they're just you can tell the difference they instantly look different they look a lot more flat to me the polyps heads are flatter yeah and it's just i just i'm not really that much of a fan of them but um but they yeah i don't know if they if they eat because gonies are a pain in the backside i actually so, prefer them to gone really? poorer yeah nah. i actually i don't know what it is i think i like if, if something's easier i'm happy with it so <laughs> yeah the trouble like, is oh sorry the only thing with them is that a lot of them are a bit more boring colors. They're just kind of like yeah. a standard green or a standard yeah. red, whereas yeah. gonies are like multicolored or really bright green, really bright red yeah. pinks, all that you, stuff. You do get really bright pink or really bright red or green alveoporous. They're just much mm. rarer than really, really bright green or like, uh, sorry, really, really different colors of gonies. You come, they come in far more often. So. Fair enough. Um, and uh, okay, so that was uh, that was a Presti Grief Coral of the Week. Oh, thanks! You just put the discount code in the in the comment section. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't I don't want to clog the the chat up with the the, the live stream up with um, chat, but I do want to answer the question. That's right. Um. Anyway, so that's the Presti Grief Fish of the Week and Coral of the Week, which means you know what that means, right? It means we got another jingle. It's the Presti Grief Talk Show News. <laughs> And I have my my shuffling papers, like a proper news because I saw today in reefing news. <laughs> come on, come on, do it with a do it with a, like a, a presenter's voice. Hello and welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk News Show tonight. Fish dies. I know. I don't want to. I don't want to use this. Um, but yeah, so Bubbly Reef pointed out last week, and I only saw when I watched it back that I'd forgotten my shuffle papers. So I've got my proper newsreader shuffle papers now. It's just A4 paper, but whatever. Bubbly Reef's like your boss. I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, um, excuse me, Alex. You didn't do the shuffling of the papers this week. <laughs> but this is uh, you, I never catch up with the chat when I'm going. But when you watch it back, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, cool. Anyway, uh, the point is, I need a pen too. Oh, I've got a pen somewhere, but you know, whatever. I've got um, a pen. There you go. See. You've got a pen. There we go. Uh, Prestige Reef Talk Show news of the week. There are a few things uh, that um, that I want to talk about. The first one. Uh, there's some good news and there's some bad news, actually. Do you, do you want to start with the good news or the bad news, Ryan? Let's go with the bad news so we can end on the good news. Ah, you always want to start with the bad news. Okay, well, in which case, the bad uh, side of that is that I didn't prepare the bad news first. So okay, do you want to start with the good news through. then? No, no, no. <laughs> Why would I'll, you I'll, even I'll ask? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, but I've got to scroll through the Prestige Reef Talk show. Oh, we have, we, have a famous person. <laughs> we have a famous person in the comment section hey, all the time. Reef Builders own Bahama Llama Coral. Yeah. Good evening, Remy. How are you? I always love it. It's funny because you never know who's watching these. And we've had, like, you obviously had Polo's Reef. We've had um, Inappropriate Reefer. Mm -hmm. We've had Reef Telegrams. Reefers. Your best mate. Who was, who's my best mate? The one you were fanboying over last Oh, week. yes. I can't, I, know it, I, I can't remember the name of it now. Coral Euphoria. <laughs> yes, Coral Euphoria. You said we've had Reef Dudes in as well. So mm. people pop in intermittently, don't they? Yeah, all YouTubers or most YouTubers probably watch uh, videos from time to time. 
maybe but, uh, and just, and like, just lurk i tend to lurk i don't i don't, I don't anyway whatever um but yeah hi Remy. how are you uh and he says thanks guys and john wright says a lot of people loving um the uh the bahama Lama goodness and uh, john wright says he loves your videos and reef therapy reef therapy is really good now with um well it wasn't before but with with remy as like the the host and then um uh, the other two raj and um mark what's his name <laughs> God, i forgot oh, his this name. is this is not mark, good yeah mark mark de wall mark van der wall whatever his name is anyway those two they, they just make a really good team so it's good job basically what i'm saying anyway news of the week so sad news to start with and this was from uh this was oh by the way if you want to post if you want to share news and you want to tag me in uh, alert me to news stories that you want me to talk about do it on the prestige reef talk show facebook page and i'll pick it up and this was from ben malloy and this is from melbourne australia there's a, a shop called exotic aquaculture australia and they had an electrical fire and it burnt down from what i can see the entire shop i worry about this myself that well this is that's why it's worth talking about so it was a, there was an, an extension lead under the the, the the counter nowhere near any water he says yeah. and it just look at that it just the, the entire place i mean fire doesn't mess around does it and yeah just that that's sad enough if it's your if it's your business yeah. but when it's when there's animals in there god they must just feel awful yeah um and and it's ruined his i mean that's just it's so there was i'm sure i saw one of these in uh texas or florida or somewhere as well recently same sort of thing but it's it so first I'm, off i'm glad I'm, we started with the bad news i'm not sure i can recover from this i know <laughs> but first off exotic agriculture i feel for you i mean uh there's not much i can say really but uh, yeah. that, that's just awful but it does also make me think about electrical safety because my i've got like a nest of snakes in my cabinet and i don't give as much thought to it as i should do yeah because if nothing happens you don't care do you but then when something does happen there are 72 plug sockets in the coral farm yeah. and trust me that but that worries me mm, um, but... so they've all they're all put in by a proper electrician everything has there's no extension leads or anything like that so everything has its individual plug socket but it does worry me sometimes yeah so indeed yeah. it and it doesn't take much so yeah uh but there we go so check your plugs or whatever <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> but, basically yeah, so, take it very seriously if, yeah, if you've got if you've got a, a a a plug socket that's going black for some reason you go oh it's still working don't worry about it deal with it <laughs> if you ever hear arcing like that little yes. crackling noise yeah instantly sort it and you know yeah. oh, just uh, or if something yeah. trips as well you know how something will trip and then you'd put it, you put it back on the, your house back on, and then it trips again. Then you put it back on, it trips again. Then you do it another time, it stops tripping. You're like, ah, oh, it'll probably be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you could normally work out what it was that was doing that. Yes. So the, the cooling fan that killed my um, temperature controller the other day. Yeah. It was it was immediately obvious what that was. Yeah. So I I plugged it in, and then it was like thirty seconds later it popped. Yeah. So, but normally I've had that before, and you can work out what it is, and like even if it's trial and error. But yeah, nasty stuff. Um, but all right, so that's the, the the bad news to start with. We're going to move on though to good news, and that is captured emperor yeah. angelfish. Yes, yeah. uh, from Biota, and this was um, th this is from Barley, Barley Aquarish, Mister Wen Peng Wen Ping Su, and this is the guy behind the Yerple tank. Yes, I think he's done a few angels actually. Yeah, he's yeah. I mean, these guys know what they're doing. But uh, yeah, you now have. Look at that little captive bread. And this isn't like when you see the like the yellow tangs, they're like see through, aren't they? They're transparent. And a lot of captive bred fish, when they're very young, they look a bit rubbish, frankly. When they get a bit yeah. bigger, they look cool. But this, I don't know how old it is, I don't know if it's older, but it looks instantly awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I wonder how I big they, yeah, because it looks yes. I reckon that's gonna be quite small. Because normally when tank bread yeah. angels come in, they're like little, little tiny ones. Yeah. So have you ever seen a, a real tank bread angel? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's that was tiny. And so, and I do wonder. I don't know. I mean, I think with it, the the article talks a bit about um, uh, whether they'll be more reef safe and all that sort of stuff. Ah, I, I feel like Hung has um, a full adult, full size adult in his display tank with all full of coral. Adult person, or yeah, full size <laughs> adult person. Wow. Yeah, a full size, a full sized adult emperor angel in his. Has he got tank. SPS only, or is he? No, SPS? it was. Full, it had gorgonians. I, 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 I can't remember everything since that. I, I didn't see. I didn't notice specific corals other than he had some gorgonians. Um, but I think there was a, there was a, it looked like a normal reef tank. So there's probably loads of stuff in there. I was shocked basically. 
Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, uh, Polo Reef has got them, but he does he does say they do eat corals, but he's just got so many yeah. and he feeds so much, it's less of a problem. But I always wonder, with, with captive bred fish, are they less likely to peck at corals just because they've never seen one? Like I always say, if you bought, like if I, I had a, when my cat was a kitten, yeah. Like he was, he was, um, he, he came in through a, to a vet yeah. and he came into my house. He'd never seen a mouse before. First time he sees a mouse, he kills it and eats it, <laughs> you know? And that, like, yeah. if you had, if you had, a, if you bred a, a lion in captivity <laughs> and then I, two years later, put it in your living room, it's likely to eat your child, isn't it? <laughs> so quite possible. I think I don't look, I don't think it makes a difference if I'm honest. Mm. I think something you, you can captive breed animals where you can breed the wild out of them, but it takes years yeah. it, to domesticate an animal. It takes years. And remember, yeah. these fish are in our tanks all day, every day, swimming around with not an awful lot to do. So at some point, they're going to go, oh, I wonder what that is. And then they'll take a bite. And, and then all of the, <laughs> there's this realization. They go, oh, what's this? Yeah. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> now with SPS, I've noticed, I've noticed the, the, the only angel that actually eats coral in there at the moment is the blue face. And um, it doesn't destroy. It. If I put if I if I put an acorn there, it'll probably destroy it like that. I will put something a bit fleshier in there just to see <laughs> how they respond. I'm not going to put something. I'm not going to put like that black and red lobo. <laughs> no. It, what I'll do is I'll put in a coral, and so it's not fle- when I say fleshy, it'll probably be a chalice. Um, so it's okay. I've got loads of it, yeah, and yeah. I might put in one of those jelly bean chalices just to see, <laughs> just, no. to, just just <laughs> for the click, just for the clickbait video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, so far, generally, it, it will it will take one bite and then it'll just ignore it, and okay. they'll come back a day later and take another bite. But it doesn't; it's not damaging it. No. But if it's captive bred, it make it stands to reason that it might be uh, more reef safe. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be going out buying an emperor angel for my tank. I'm, I'm not actually sure that they eat corals in the wild. They eat sponges, <laughs> so I they must I do. Think, they must. I, I'm not a hundred. I know they definitely eat sponges, but yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure that these angels eat coral in the wild. So I might like that. Could I've never I've never studied wild fish, so you know I, you can't like expect me to know. But I'm pretty sure I know for sure that their diet is is heavily sponge based. I'd be amazed if they if they only eat um, corals in captivity. I mean, that would be weird thing. behavior. Well, but... they're hungrier probably because they don't they don't they can't yeah. eat whenever they want. They eat when they're fed. Yeah. And as I said, if they, if they've got a choice of a sponge mm. or a coral, animals go without food in the wild. I don't know about fish so much. Anyway, mm, whatever. Not it, those it's... sorts of like predators would, but not those sorts of fish. They can swim yeah, around okay. and peck, Grazes. can't they? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah peck on corals. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, who knows? First off, uh, just a quick interruption, um, Mr. Mukherjee. Please watch this, sir. Uh, if you've posted a link, YouTube doesn't let you post links. It immediately removes them on any video, any comment whatsoever, yeah. even in live chat. It just removes them straight away. I don't have any control over it. It removes yeah. them. So put it on the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page um, and uh, and I will watch it. Um, all right. So that is uh, the first piece of good news. The second piece of good news. Ah, there is a an aquatics show in the UK. I was going to mention this. But... Yeah. So this um, is called Aqua H. And I've been trying to access this page for the last two, three days. Yeah. But it's bit my firewall's been blocking it. And for some reason today, it didn't block it. So here it is. It is there's a few things about it. So first off, um, it is saltwater, freshwater, koi, reptiles, and a few other bits, amphibians, I think, as well. So all sorts of things there, but uh, which I think is probably the way to do it because you'll get more people through the door. Yeah. It's on the 6th to the 7th of April, 2024, next year. Yeah. So that's a good time of year. Uh, and it's on a Saturday and a Sunday, two full days. Yeah. And this looks huge. Have you seen the, the auditorium? So I've seen the layout. Yeah. It's also so in, this, it's, it's in the CV postcode, which is like the Coventry. center of, yeah. So Coventry. Exactly. Yeah. Is it actually in Coventry? I don't know. I don't no, know. I think it's in, uh, it's not, it's, it's in, it's in Warwickshire. <laughs> but anyway, well, well, that's it. more. Wait a minute. So, so is it not in the CV postcode? It is, it is. Warwickshire oh. is CV, yeah. Oh, is yeah. It? I, I don't know. But it's central. But, what, Kenilworth, yeah, it's, there you go. It's more the centre of the country than yeah. one, some, one of the other ones, if you see what I mean. Exactly. So it's the perfect location. It's yeah. this, these halls as well. So these these little uh, teal-coloured squares, they are all uh, vendor exhibits. Three metre squared, that's 18-foot square. And these, the purple ones, mauve, whatever, 
they're three meters by six meters so they are huge yeah and there's dozens of them and with like, there's a lot more money i think in freshwater and, and koi so there'll be a lot of that there but there this will be massive yeah uh, there are two two halls of this size that they've got so the naec in uh in kenilworth it looks like a big venue tickets are not that expensive 12 quid for the day there you go that's not bad no uh, and one of the things i did see as well was uh there was a, a an option to be a vendor there here you go 500 quid ryan for a three meter square uh, uh selling stand are you gonna, are you gonna run the stand for me no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Marina. Marina, hello. Good evening. She's Can listening. You... She's definitely listening to you. <laughs> you need to kick Ryan into gear. I know you're on this already. And one of the things you need to kick him onto gear in is selling at um, places like this. It would be fantastic. It would be very, very good for business. And more to the point, it'd be good for us, the hobbyists, the people watching. So make it happen. Make it so. If, so basically, if Marina is willing to be the host of the stand we're in, I'm not saying this is uh, she's got to do it. I'm just saying she's got to make it happen. What, how that happens is is down to her. I actually yours. did have a few people last time we spoke. We spoke about this when we were talking about Aqua Telford, um, where some of the the uh, people that follow the channel went, "I'll look after the stand for you." <laughs> so I don't know. I, like, how much I is like... that? That Bugatti Chalice? Oh, twenty quid. That'll do. <laughs> Take four. <laughs> I, I didn't. Oh, I, I'm not, oh, oh, I see, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if other people yeah. don't know what the. Yeah, that's yeah. True. that's true. Probably a bad <laughs> yeah. idea. I'm, I'll man it for you. Yeah, fine. Yeah. You're oh, like, right, torch. I sold all your corals to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Five quid I got for the lot. <laughs> yeah. Look, Les um, is saying he can, he'll, I can use his transit van. Look, I love how people want see. me there so much that they're willing to put in more effort than I'm willing to put in. <laughs> exactly. The community is coming together. Um, and it sits between Warwick University and Leamington Spa, Royal Leamington Spa. So the king will... This is approved by the king, this place. There you go. Fact. Um, so and it's closer to Birmingham or Solihull. Solihull. You know, Solihull. Solihull. It's oh, really, that's how it's pronounced. That's how the locals pronounce it. Oh. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so that that's this. And you know what? We've been told before that there's a, a, a coral show happening and it's falling apart. Yeah. But this looks quite a long way down the line to me i know the person who is running it so mm. and it's i i i i i do you know what was interesting before i knew this was happening i thought to myself if this person runs it it will probably happen and be a, really? like a serious yeah. like a proper show so it's um, reef lounge aquatics is the the shop that this guy owns right? i don't know if we're allowed to say this so <laughs> Uh, it, well, he, he's posted. He's posted oh, on Facebook he? in his own name. Okay, fine. Nick but... Hugill, his name is. All, I don't. Yeah, oh, now, now you're properly telling people. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's posted it, but um, but yeah. Well, so yeah. you think if he's running it, it's going to be good? But I don't know if it's just him. But either way, I, it he, looks. He set up a shop, and the shop was set up like properly. So Th yeah, this this looks the nuts. <laughs> basically, yeah. this looks uh, this looks proper. Um, and I know it's just a website, so you know what does that mean? But it looks they, they've all this stuff. This looks like it's is going to happen, and it's going to be good. So, and I, I'm there. I'm I'm all over this. I'm there. Yeah, I will definitely be there. Um, just in what capacity? <laughs> in what capacity I'll be there is unknown at the moment. Yeah. So they even show you how to buy. You can buy some tanks. Have you seen so, any of these tanks? These are from your mate, the Polyp Pros. Yeah, I know. I know. He was here yesterday, actually. He was one who was oh, actually really? helping set up. The, when I say helping, I mean mostly setting up. Yeah, the, uh, doing it. <laughs> yeah. The only thing, I, these tanks look awesome, but yeah. they're acrylic, I think. Yeah, I know. If they were but, glass, I'd be all Yeah, but acrylic tanks is exactly what you want for a show. I don't know yeah, how... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because you're not going to run it, it for it, the whole year, are you? If I want to do oh, that show, I'm going to have to... It's £500 to do it. It's yep. 600 pounds for just one small tank. And, and one small tank is not going to fill up a three meter <laughs> mm. um, section, if you see what I mean. So there there would be. And if it's the only time that sh if you look, don't get me wrong, you could use that same tank over and over again for other shows, which is what people would do in America. But we don't know if there are going to be other shows. Do, do you see what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, you've got to speculate to accumulate. Yes, other yes, I know what you mean. But anyway, that whatever that's so there's a year for that to happen, but that looks good and uh, it's happening. So cool. Yeah. As I said, I, I, I'm looking forward to it because I think it'll be done properly. So good. Well, there we go. And that concludes the news. Okay.
back and put my shuffling papers away now. So there we go. Uh, and that means that we are now on to the mass debate. Oh, you got Nick's the shop of the the name of Nick's shop wrong. Not good. He's just What's messaged me. Um, you got the uh, what is it called? One second. He said it's reef aquatics, not reef, reef aquatics. Land. Aquatics. There you go. There you um, go. So it's called Reef Aquatics is the shop. So go and check out Reef Aquatics yeah. uh, if so, you want to know more about the place. Uh, there you go. Is it L Market Raisin? Lincolnshire? I think it's Lincolnshire, yeah. You know how anyway. you mentioned Marina a second ago? She just messaged me with an underline of John Wright's comment saying we'd all go to see Marina. <laughs> there so you go. <laughs> she's in already. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. Anyway, the mass debate. Yes. So this is, and this is like, so it's a, a little bit of a provocative title. When I posted this on the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page, it says, like, the, the thumbnail is, you can't do this. Yeah. And I posted, I was like, this looks weird. <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm talking to these people specifically. So I was like, yeah. I promise this won't be too negative. And that's not what it's about. But um, this came from, like, you were talking about last week about um, you just need to be, able, you just need to care and that sort of thing. And it got yeah. me thinking about the things that people think they need to be able to do to, to run a saltwater tank, like degree in marine biology, et cetera, and the actual reality. Yeah. Uh, and you have some uh, some thoughts on this, Ryan. So you're going you to throw me in there straight away, are you? Straight away, yeah. <laughs> straight away. Um, there is a huge amount of mentality behind mm -hmm. running a reef tank. And this is actually one of the things which I do talk to people about in the consultations, because there's a lot of people that, are that some people just will need to be accountable. They just need someone to go, this is what you need to do. And next yeah. week, I'm going to make sure you've done it. <laughs> um, but so there is a certain level of commitment that you need to have. You need to have patience. You yeah. need to be willing to, you need to have like a thirst for knowledge where you constantly want to learn and adapt um, to these things. Mm -hmm. You need to willing be willing to accept other people's ideas. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if you want me to just keep going or... So I, t I tell you what, I'll, I'll interrupt you there because you said you need a thirst for knowledge. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so I think there are there are degrees to this. So I think you need to be... I, I've put that you need to be enthusiastic about it or passionate about it. Yeah. So you need to be able yeah, to do passion, research. Yes. Yeah, you need to... Which is all the same sort of thing, really. You need to be able to, to, to want to do research. Basically, you need to be really interested in it. Yes. And it, you don't need to be the sort of person who must know everything and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But if you're if you're passionate about it, you'll find yourself wanting to know more, and you'll see a hawkfish, for example, in the shop, and you'll you'll find yourself googling it and asking questions on the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. Which Alex will answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> it so, it's it's just it's one of those hobbies. I, I thought quite a lot about this topic. Mm -hmm. It's one of those hobbies where people go into this, and I think this is the entirely wrong mentality going this is going to be almost impossible because there's this myth that this is like one of the hardest things you can do now don't get me wrong you will have challenges mm -hmm. but this is not impossible right. and it, it literally comes down to you people mm -hmm. are almost willing to accept failure before they've even started whereas they what they should be thinking is i know there's going to be setbacks in my journey as everyone has, as mm -hmm. I have, as you still have, oh, yeah. there are going to be setbacks. But whatever happens, I'm going to achieve this because the reality is it's just a glass box with water in it. And if you change 100% of that water, if it was like, not, don't get me wrong, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? If that water is like pure, crystal clear, you're going to be good, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to learn how to do the testing and things like that. There are, there's, there's different... Um, I see all sorts of people, as I said, because I've talked to so many. Some people really, really care, and they really, really want to, to learn and engage and, yeah. and improve. And don't get me wrong, there are some people that, that don't. Now, this actually wasn't one of the people I had a consultation with, but someone asked me for help. And I went back to them. I said, look, this is what I need from you. I need to, I need to know your calcium, alkalinity, mm -hmm. magnesium, phosphate, nitrate, and then they came back to me about, I think, 10 days later. And then they went, here is my nitrate and, and phosphate test. And <laughs> so that person doesn't care enough yeah. to come back to me with the actual answers in a quick enough time. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't even reply to that person because I thought, why am I going to waste my time trying to help you? Because you, you approach gonna, me, yeah. you approach me 
saying my corals are dying. And I went, look, OK, I'll take my time to come and help you. But when I when I, they didn't come back with the information, I'm like, well, why do I care more than you? That, that's a really good example because it's all about you don't need a degree in marine biology. You don't need to even understand the science. I don't understand the science. You yeah. don't need uh, an absolute boatload of cash. Yeah. Uh, you don't need hours on end of spare time. But you do need to want to care about it. And if if someone if you seek help and someone says you need to tell me all of these, yeah. then you need to say okay, right. So that's what I need. If you go back, well, the fact that he's gone back ten days later already yeah. tells you yeah. that person's not really that bothered. And coming back with just a percentage of the information, yeah, it's like Literally. what that what that person is looking for is look, mate. Can you just tell me what lights I need to buy to fix it, please? But it doesn't work like that, as you know. Exactly. exactly. And if that's what if that's your attitude, and I, yeah. I don't I want to sound I don't want to sound like I'm criticizing this particular person, but that kind of uh, that kind of response yeah. is the is the is the kind of person who probably isn't cut out for the hobby. Correct, one hundred percent. That's the only thing that matters is the attitude. It doesn't you don't need to be a genius. Look at you. I mean, for God's sake. Yeah, I'm not. I've look. I can absolutely 100 percent assure you, I am not a genius. I'm yeah. far from a genius, but, but I am is, inquisitive. Exactly, and I, and I care. You and care, I, and you're enthusiastic about it. Yes, and I still, I still love it. 15 years later, I still yeah, love yeah. it, <laughs> and I still see things and I learn things. Do you know what was really interesting, which I haven't didn't mention last week? Do you remember I said that there was a bit of white spot on some of the fish? Mm, mm. Well, I may have told you this, but I can't remember. The angelfish. We'll try so angelfish when they're juveniles will clean white spot off other or, or clean parasites oh, off other okay. fish. So I, I, I was sitting there watching it, and the tangs were going over to the little gold flake, which is really? the smallest one, turning to their side. So the gold flake would pecking. peck it. Yeah, no way. So you would expect that sort of behavior in a cleaner ass or a yeah, cleaner or shrimp. A clean shrimp but, yeah. you, but seeing that was like <laughs> wow. And That's I knew cool. of, I knew of that behavior, but I've never seen that behavior. Yeah, so. Yeah. Even now, it's still you can see the excitement when I talk about these things, um, and I don't think that passion will ever go away. No, but because it's such a, it's not like a hobby where you spend six months doing it and then you've mastered it and you're done. Yeah, like you can you do this hobby for Mike Paletta and Sanjay Joshi always say like I'm still learning, and they yeah. are all constantly. You can do it for years, you can do it for decades, and you don't master yeah. it. That's what keeps it interesting. But yeah. that doesn't mean that you need. 20 years experience before you start having success. Jay's Real Reef, for example, your tank of yes. week from a couple of weeks ago. First yeah. ever tank looks banging. Yeah, probably because he cares. And one of the exactly reasons he probably he cares, cares as well is because he's on YouTube. So he is accountable to yeah, someone. True. He's accountable yeah. to us. Like yeah, not yeah. us, but like yeah, yeah. everyone else. Mm. So he wants his tank to look good. He wants mm. his corals to look good. Because he knows that if he doesn't, he's going to have to go, look, I've got bought this coral and it's now yeah, dead and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. So that it does make you it does make you accountable having a YouTube channel, which I, I know you feel it as well. Mm. Um, so the, I, I do want to mention on the other hand as well. So I had um, another person, which is the person I spoke to about before. And, and before I mention any of this, um, mm. I actually specifically asked the person if I could mention this. Yep. So you might think that this is critical. That person is actually in the chat at the moment because I, I saw him right earlier. I know okay. I'm going to be in trouble after this. <laughs> so okay. I had one of the best consultations I'd had. And I spoke to him for probably about 20 minutes. And he, he had an issue where some of his corals were dying, which, as I said, mm. you, you you know about this. And everything was spot on. His his lights were fine. What, his, his parameters appeared to be fine over a long period of time. But one of the things he did during this consultation was he lit a cigarette. Yeah, and and then I said to him, "Do you often smoke near the tank?" And he said, "Yes, I do." And, and he actually said to me, "He smokes quite a lot near the tank." Now mm. that he has now agreed because he wants to have a better channel, uh, not a better channel. <laughs> I said to him in this consultation, "Do you think the people that have the best tanks are sitting there smoking next to their tank? Mm. Because the chances are they're not. And if you want to have a better tank, then you need to change your behaviour." So you have to be willing to not just change that <laughs> behavior, which he now has said, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'll go somewhere else to do that. Um, but you might need to become more routined. So you're, if you have a better routine where every every week on a Sunday you do a water change, top up the dosing pumps, yep. do the RO, you're more likely to have success than one who doesn't have a routine. <laughs> so you have to be able to be willing to change who you are. Like some of your core like values as a person or 
to fit this in sometimes to, to it... a degree however I, I think that you i think you can make the hobby fit around you so i'm generally quite a lazy person i don't like maintenance yeah. in anything like yeah. my garden looks like a meadow 90 percent of the time <laughs> yeah. i mean i, I just... have noticed <laughs> exactly like, I d- just, life is all about my 90 percent of life is maintenance basically and yeah. i don't like any of it yeah. And and that's and I'm still the same with my tank. It's not like I'm just meticulous with a tank and rubbish with everything else. Yeah. I let everything slip. My phosphates are high, my nitrates are high. I let yeah. algae grow in the glass sometimes. I might have cyano that I don't deal with for months on end. So you, you can adapt around that. You don't have to change everything about your personality. But yeah. you do find that if you get really into it, that you then you want to you because you if you have a bit of success early on, particularly as well, it's amazing. Even if you just have a piece of pulsing xenia that grows yeah. <laughs> it's amazing yeah. and it makes you more enthusiastic about it Correct. so you don't have to be this perfect person and change your entire personality but you do have to there are some things you have to do and that will make you want to spend more time and do, put more effort into the tank correct correct the person i just mentioned is actually in the chat and he literally just said i'm now not smoking in that room great like like so that person shows me who, who, in, what's his name i can't uh, mark his third third mark chat. McGlinchey. Uh, yeah so cool that, so mark has shown me that he cares more than the person who wh- when i asked him for the test results so i'm more likely to help mark than i am to help the other person if you see what i mean because then, i know so, my th- time is going in the better place this is the thing so I, I, I i'm guessing the other the person who you're talking about wasn't a consultation no it was so they actually they came to the coral farm to buy coral and yep. the coral they bought from me about two weeks later died and then they sent me a picture of their tank, and I said, "Look, there is a, there is a, there is a problem with your tank. Definitely." Yeah. I said, I, he, "Look, they might actually be in in listening now. It's unlikely. Um, yeah. I don't think they followed the channel. They found me just by luck." Yeah. Um, and yeah. they sent me a picture of their and their bubble tip was white. And I said, "Literally, your bubble tip is is not healthy." And then it, they kept, the response back was, "My bubble tip's fine. It's always been like that." That's not the color of a bubble tip. <laughs> but so many people see, I see that all the time. So many people will see a, a white bubble tip anemone in a shop and they're like, oh, look how awesome it is. Yes. And it does. The first time you see it, it yeah. does look amazing. Yes, I but agree. when you know, it's like, that's dead. Yeah. Now, if that person <laughs> is listening, I'm not slating you. But no, if no, you no. are listening, if you come back to me with the, the information I request, I will help you. It's as simple as that, because I want this is a local person. I want to be able to sell you coral. You're local to me. But I, as I said, I don't want to sell someone coral to, for that then to die because I spend hard. I, it's hard work doing this at, sometimes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't want I want everyone to have success. Otherwise, they don't come back. It's as simple where, as that. Where I was going with that is that and I yeah. say this, I've said say this quite often, but you're um, every now and then someone will say, you shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't be charging for consultations. Yeah. You should be doing it for free. But if you just do it for free, for a start, you'd have a thousand people queuing up. And more Correct. to the point, you yeah. would have people who were like, "Well, it's free, so I might as well give it a crack." Yeah. And then they'd phone you and they'd be like, "So, what should I do?" Oh, I don't want to do any of that. Whereas when you're, when you're paying, you're more yeah. enthusiastic about it and you're more yeah. likely to listen. And that's why people get so much out of the consultation. I have people Psycho- that come. Oh, I have people come back thing. every week. Exactly, every it's a psychological week. thing because sixty quid at the end of the day. All right, it's not a small amount of cash, but in the yeah. terms of the hobby, it's nothing. Yeah. But handing over, it's like when you buy when you have to buy a, a carrier bag from your supermarket. Yeah. It's like, Do you want a carrier bag, mate? It's five p. Like, I'm not paying five p. Yeah. It's just that psychological thing that makes a difference. Yeah. And that's why people get so much out of your consultations. What I can say is, it's unlikely that anyone, because remember, I, I literally do it where I go through everything with them, and it's unlikely that someone else would have gone, are you smoking next to your tank? Because I wouldn't yeah. have asked that question yeah, had I it. not seen yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, you're not like, you're, in fact, you're definitely not going to be smoking in a shop. So, nice. and although I don't know for sure if this is, if that is what's causing the problem, but what I do know is there is a potential that could be causing the problem. There was yeah. a few other issues. The person also had a Blenny, which uh, is known for eating coral. Um, <clears throat> but that he, uh, he said that he hadn't seen that before. Um, so all I know is that if if smoking is not good for people and it, and literally just breathing, just breathing can affect your tank because it what changes this, the pH. So this is the thing as well. Water absorbs everything. Yes. And like so, so sometimes we're too sensitive. So like if my missus sprays polish on the in the living room right the get table. a new missus if she's spraying <laughs> <Exactly>. polish out <laughs> no I'll, I'll, I'll like flip out 
And yeah. it's like, what are you doing? Oh. And like, and if I ever like spray polish, if I polish the table, I, I really care for it. I'll just don't and polish. It's much exactly. better. Okay. Which, which I don't, obviously. <laughs> yeah. but like, things like that, we're so overly sensitive and we take it far too seriously. But it's because water is um, absorbs everything. And so there's that. There's, I don't know if, if smoking in the room um, affects your tank, but I wouldn't mind betting it does. And it yeah. will absorb all that sort of stuff. So yeah. there's every chance. Yeah. There's one comment I wanted to pick up on quickly from John Wright. Uh, sometimes you can research too many, uh, too much because so many different opinions. Yeah. absolutely right and this is so um so you can find that you'll you'll uh, this and one thing with this is so that's completely spot on because yeah. you'll if you ask should do i need a skimmer you'll get yeah. 10 different answers not just yes no it'll be yes absolutely well yes you do if you want to keep these corals no it's a waste of time yes if your tank is this big uh yeah. no but you should only run it um if you do you should only run it 12 hours a day all these sorts of things yeah yeah but that's one of the skills that you need is to be able to filter through all of this you don't just listen and this is so this is one of the this skill is really annoying to some people because when i started joining the hobby i was asking loads of questions on ultimate reef good forum that you should all join by the way yeah. it's really good for advice um but i used to ask loads of questions and people would give me answers and i'd be like yeah i'm not sure about that i want more answers and it's yeah. not because i'm like no you're wrong it's because i want to i want to know like 10 people's opinions yeah. and then you need to be able to sift through that and work out what makes sense to you now yeah. when you're new to the hobby you'll get it wrong all the time <laughs> and you'll probably look for the, the answer that gives you the easiest solution but after a while you do get to look through like if with a long nose hawkfish that stephanie wright mentioned earlier yeah she will now uh, when you've got a, a few years under your belt in the hobby when you first start in the hobby you're like oh there's 10 different opinions who's right yeah. When a few years down the line and you've kept a few of these different fish, you're like, oh, they're all right. And actually the reality yeah. is that it's not one fish is not the same as the other. So you need to be able to kind of filter through that. And it can be a bit of a minefield at first, but the answer is try it. If there's something that you're like, oh, I don't know. I've, I've looked, I've Googled it and I've got 10 answers. Try it. Just try it. And if it doesn't go right, that's fine. You'll learn from it. And yeah. your own experience is is really, really valuable. What, what I did, even, even remember, I set the coral farm up 12 years in. I, I, I went on to YouTube. I looked at Worldwide Corals. Um, <laughs> literally, ev all the different yeah. people, like I think the Pirates Reef and like all the really successful people. What's the other one that is Worldwide Corals closest compared to? Top Shelf. Top Shelf Aquatics, yeah. I looked at, I watched as many videos as I could find to find their, the parameters that they were all running. Yeah, yeah. And then I took an average of all their parameters. So some of them were running KH of 12. Some of them were running of 7. And and then and some of them were running a temperature of twenty six on twenty four. So I I have an average temperature of twenty five point five for the coral farm, because that was the average of all the temperatures I got of all the yeah, successful yeah. people. So even I could learn from other people, uh, like all but, the time. And the, and the, so the thing is, so with that you picked a temperature twenty five is and a half, whatever. I've won twenty five, but whatever. My two LPS tanks I won twenty four. What it doesn't really matter. You picked that, yeah. but you've learned that actually over the years you've been running the farm, it works. Yeah. There'll be times when you'll have done all that research, and then a year later you do more research, and you'll see more yeah. people say actually elevated temperature makes your corals grow faster. Yeah. And then you and you and it'll be from someone who knows what their knows their stuff. It'll be Sanjay Joshi or something, and you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. But I think they were the that. people. They were the people that I looked at. Yeah, I looked I at probably <laughs> ten people, ten like yeah, not yeah. just shops, but also like the legends of the of the yeah, yeah. industry. Um, yeah. So. But and then you'll try something new. You're like, oh, I'm going to try running at 27 if it makes my cars go faster. And then what, you'll learn. Go on. Yeah. Now, what was so interesting is they're all very different. They're yeah. so different. Even Mike Paletta was was literally running daylight, like sunlight at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And it, Than from Tidal Gardens was running, was using sunlight as well. Um, so there is so many different, there is no specific ways to have success in this <laughs> hobby, no. which is why there's usually so many different answers. Yeah. So someone, someone the other day said to me, oh, I want to try kelp because that's what Reef Talk does. And I went, if you want to try it, by all means, go for it. I mean, he is an idiot, so don't listen to him. <laughs> that is not, not, not the customer, I'm talking about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> so, I got that. Just to clarify. Um, yeah. <laughs> But no, that, so I, do you know what I was thinking about this? I, you know, I don't like being called an influencer, but you yeah. know, and you take the mic at me all the time and call me yeah. an influencer. <laughs> but ultimately, 
YouTubers are influencers to, you know, whatever. Uh, so, but the thing I love, I Google, I went on to, if you open an incognito tab on a, on an internet browser yeah. and you search YouTube, it, when you search, it doesn't bring up your history. Yeah. So it just gives you, it's, it's YouTube being honest. And you, yeah. when you type in reef dog, the first suggestion, reef dog calquasser. And is I it? was like, yes, if that, if, so if that is my influence, is that, if that's my legacy, at the yeah. risk of sounding like an absolute wanker, <laughs> if that's my legacy. Your legacy that... is bringing back something that people have been using for 30 years. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, it is. And it, but and like, if, if that's what, if that's what people know me for, and yeah. that's what I've influenced people to do, that is about, that's better than influencing people to buy the latest, you know, Kessel or Radion or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which I've probably already also done as well. But anyway, so a couple of comments I'm going to pick up. Um, SUV Porridge <laughs> says, the best type of learning is if you experience it your own. Exactly. Your trial and error is you just can't beat it. And you'll, you, you won't always learn. You'll make a mistake and you'll learn the wrong thing. So you won't always get it right straight away with that. But learning for yourself and trying to, trying to understand it is really important. So if you make a mistake and you try to work out what's gone wrong, You'll often get it wrong. You often won't be able to figure it out. And if you do figure it out, you'll actually, you'll, you'll be, you'll, you'll have, you'll have picked on something that sounds right, but actually it's, you've gone down the wrong lane, but yeah. it's that process that makes really good reefers and, and that they're in keen to learn what they've done wrong and try to work it out for themselves. Yeah. And the other um, comment I wanted to put, uh, pull out was from Mark Thor. He says, a good example is your blade video, Alex. I couldn't see what you're talking about though. A good example of what? I watched that video too. See, I'm Did like you? I'm like a number one fan at the moment. Do you know what? If you watch one of my videos, I know I've done a good job of the thumbnail and title. Because uh, you don't. I watch, know. They, watch... look, don't get wrong. You know that. Well, one of them was because I needed something, so that's why. Yeah. I watched, which is what yeah, YouTube's true. for. That's literally what yeah, YouTube's yeah, yeah. for. <laughs> and you did say to me, actually, you pointed me in the direction of your video. That's why I watched it. <laughs> Uh, you're okay, like okay. i'm not helping you just go watch my video i've already done the information i didn't say that <laughs> no you didn't but you know what i mean yeah 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 yeah. So, um but yeah uh, chris meckley is obsessed with ph he is i and think this... that's dangerous i really <sighs> think that's dangerous because there are beginners that are entering into the hobby yeah. that are obsessed with ph and they're doing all these things to get high ph and i say to people don't try and turbocharge your tank you're not yeah. trying to get the best growth you just try to keep things alive at first. Exactly, and this is so I, I agree actually with that. So, but but he doesn't. He's obsessed with pH, but he doesn't try. So he pegs his pH at eight point three using all sorts of hydroxides and various other chemicals. Yeah. This is on like a, a like a half acre farm yeah. <laughs> basically. But he doesn't ever say, guys, I'm using sodium hydroxide. You should be using sodium hydroxide. I'm using potassium hydroxide. That's what you should be using. In fact, he says the exact opposite. He says, don't do it. Yes. But yeah. all people hear is he says, I don't care about KH anymore. I only care about pH. I don't care what my alkalinity is. It's 14. It doesn't matter. But that's because he has the ability and a totally different system with thousands of gallons. He has the ability to peg his pH at 8.3. I'd be yeah. really interested to see what he thinks about um, uh, people only focusing on pH and not focusing on alkalinity when they're not doing what he's doing. I think that people need to do the basics first. Yeah, oh, uh, like, completely. Like, it's just keep it very simple. You don't need to be feeding your corals at first when you've just got one Duncan coral. You, like, all you're that doing is polluting your tank. Better not, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's so many things which people are doing now because they think they need to do them. And you go, mm. actually, no, take that out, take that out, take that out, and, and your life will be easier. Yeah. Some people, like I've had it where people are feeding like multiple times a day for just to two clownfish. I'm like, no, one like mm -hmm. all you're doing is putting more pollution. Look, the clownfish are happy. Don't get me yeah. wrong, yeah, but yeah, yeah. literally <laughs> once a day is fine. The rest of your tank isn't. Yeah, yes, and you're you're actually making it harder for yourself. Um, but Completely. I know someone. I actually know two people who have gone down that method of trying of the Chris Meckley method, who were relative beginners. Um, and they found it much harder. And I said, look, let's just go back to the basics. We're not trying to like turbocharge the tank. Just keep things alive. Exactly. And, and that, will, that, that will get you so much further than trying to pour in um, yeah. uh, coral food and trying to uh, bump your pH to 8.4 or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's like, don't, don't go for the, like really, really high light because go for <laughs> the light that most corals can live in. And then you're <clears> most <throat> likely to have success. <laughs> 
exactly and yeah and then because it's easy to to look you'll find some people who have who run high temperatures high alkalinity and high light yes maybe even high nutrients and their corals grow really quick so you're like oh that must be the right thing to do but it's not don't go for the outlier go for what 90 percent of people do and the one downside of all my calculus videos is a lot of the questions i get asked is how do i raise my ph most effectively um and i'll ask questions back and they're like they don't have any corals it's like don't forget it you don't dose calculus if you want to dose calculus don't test your ph just dose it it will be good don't need to work don't need to obsess about it that's yeah. not my message <laughs> but people pick up on that and they're like it must be that which is an obvious thing to pick up on yeah and it takes you a couple of years in the hobby to kind of work out that you don't need to obsess about these things but the basics we always say this the yeah. basics are what matter don't mess around with all these other things it's there's no doubt that feeding corals is good for corals yeah. but that's when you've nailed everything else. It's not going to do your tank any good if it's three months old and you're chucking in reef energy, uh, reef roids, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, this actually need, leads nicely into patience. Patience is what people yeah, need yeah. to have. Um, and again, this is someone else who I also ask. I like to ask people if I can mention it, um, it, it with, when I talk to them. Uh, they, they had a problem with their tank. We found out the salinity was way too low. He, and then he, he came out and he said, oh, like, if I, I increase the salinity, can I come back to you and buy coral next week? And I'm like, no, no, that's not how this works. Yeah, we yeah. need to keep this stable for a long time yeah, before. Yeah. Now, that, that I said, literally said this to him. I said, I said, I know this is counterproductive for me because I'm going to make less money because I'm not mm. going to get cor more coral sold. But the reality is if you have more success in 10 years time, yeah, you'll have bought still, loads yeah, of corals yeah. from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It's... And that, so the patience is, is a funny thing because I'm not a patient patient person at all. Yeah. I, I'm very impulsive, but I've kind of I've learned that patience. And actually, part of it is laziness. So there are times when I'm just like, I can't be bothered, so I'm not going to change anything. Yeah. And that's that's what people call the right kind of lazy because it means that you are patient. But patience, you don't have to be a patient person. I am not at all yeah. <laughs> in the slightest. But you learn it and you can. I can be patient with my tank. I'm still not always, but you can be. So you don't have to be patient. But you do need patience if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, and, and a little a little tip for the people that aren't patient: <laughs> don't buy frags. <laughs> if you're not a patient person and you want yeah, to fill yeah. your tank and it looks like a proper reef tank, spend the more, make sure obviously your tank's stable and everything. But buy bigger colonies. You don't see big colonies around so much anymore. Don't buy SPS colonies though, not wild ones. Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, no, I'm, yeah, I was actually thinking sure. of things like Duncan's and and like trumpet corals and things like that. Like, I thought of a really good example for that. So my flu Libo is about a year old, yeah, and yet you can you can see a couple of corals, but that's it. You wouldn't think that's because it's not packed and grown out, and loads yeah. of people have got really full full flu Libos. Mm -hmm. But I've just bought a few corals that I like. I've not packed in too much, and I know that it's going to take a few years for it to grow out properly. I'm yeah. cool with that. And that is, and I'm buying frags because I like that I can place them where I want, and that um, I know that they're they're probably hardy and all this sort of stuff. So with that, I've learned um, patience. Whereas m with my first tank, I wouldn't have been that patient because no. it's easy to think, "Oh, come on, I need it to be." Nah. But you realise with corals that you know Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes a yeah. long time. And it, like you have to you have to learn to appreciate the millimeters in this hobby. Yeah, yeah. Learn to appreciate like the the. You know those frags, the millipora frags I put in the water box tank? Mm -hmm. and I just put them in there just to see if they, if the fish would eat them. I didn't even expect them to survive, if I'm honest, because it's not really ready for corals, which is why I haven't put them in there. Yeah. They're, <clears throat> they're growing onto the bases of the plugs. So that those that was one of the highlights of my week. Isn't that yeah. crazy that there's like a couple of millimeters on a frag plug? I've got a whole coral farm full of thousands of corals. And those couple of millimeters were the most enjoyable part of my week. <laughs> that's funny. But that's it. You, when you see that, that's really satisfying. And I've got a couple of corals that are encrusting a little bit. And it's yeah. literally millimeters. And you're like, yeah. yes, I've nailed it. I'm doing well. <laughs> to appreciate these millimeters, another bit of advice. Take a picture of your tank. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And then you can go back and you can go. Regularly, right, every this... month, every yes. week. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll go, oh, actually, that's that that, that frag uh, that frag has grown a little bit more this week, or or whatever. Because and... it's like you it's you you see your tank every day for six months, and it looks like nothing's grown. But then when yeah. you look back at photos, even I still do that now, and I know this. I, I still do yeah. it now, and I'm like, 
bloody hell i thought that was a slow grow it's like five yeah. times the size in a month <laughs> it's not just that the fish also usually grow quite a lot as well oh yeah oh time. absolutely if you take it's harder to take photos of fish but i've done that sometimes yeah and they get big quick <laughs> yeah yeah and it's rewarding to see it especially as well so your regal angel the pattern on that regal angel will change as it gets yeah. bigger it will like you'll see more bands come in so it's um it's something not noticed, actually do you know what I, I should look back at photos because i've not noticed him getting bigger but i bet he has actually yeah That's oh they point. regal angels grow uh, quite quickly i've i had one before but it's interesting because the small ones have like a f just a few bands and then as yeah, they get yeah. bigger you don't notice that more and more are like yeah. sneaking in that's it yeah yeah it's like when when if like if your uncle uh, if you've got a kid and your uncle sees them once every six months they're like hasn't he grown and you're like well not really no <laughs> it's yeah. the same thing you don't because you see it every day the, the follow-up comment from mark thor about my blade review is he means that with all the other re reviews of high opinions were well, higher opinions of the blade mine was more of a useful and critical look rather than a promo and the thing with that is, so that was, the, the AI Blade is an absolutely fantastic light. I'm massively impressed with it. But all of the videos I saw, all the reviews I saw about it, particularly BRS, um, and I love BRS, so, you know, I'm not, not criticizing them too strongly. But all of the other videos were acting like it was the most perfect thing you've ever seen in your life. And the reality is, as with everything, as with a Ferrari, it's got plus sides and minus sides. I just wanted to talk yeah. about the minus sides a bit more. But don't get me wrong, it's still a brilliant light. Anyway. We're not talking about we're talking about corals and there was actually there was one last comment i wanted to mention someone asked how my home wrecker aqua is i'm not convinced it is actually a home wrecker if i'm completely honest <laughs> but uh it's doing well and this is it this is this was it a few months ago and it started as a one inch frag it's now it's it's bigger than that that's a crap photo because the colors look awful it actually looks really nice yeah um and it's the only tenuous i've had i've had a couple of tenuous recently that have started to fade and i think they're going to die no yeah. idea why they were looking awesome a month ago maybe it's because something happened whilst i was away i don't know but tenuous are a pain in the ass that one though really? is looking mm, chef's kiss <laughs> well that that sort of come i've mentioned it briefly at the beginning like accepting that there'll be setbacks Mm. is is part of the hobby <laughs> like you have to accept and one of the things i get people to do get a tank that you love find a tank it doesn't, as many as you want you want one or, or ten or anything or the same size as yours go this is what i want to achieve because then you can visualize it yeah. and then every time there's a bad day you incur you, you go look it's okay it's a bad day it's a bit algae at the moment but i can visualize this is what i'm going towards and i'm going to have this no matter what and going yes Whatever it takes, I'm going to do this because it's not hard if you are willing to put in the effort. Mm. There, there, don't get me wrong. There is certain learning and like, as I said to you before the stream, the water box has algae. If I was a beginner, I'd be freaking out, but I don't yeah, care exactly. because I'm like, and I'm like, actually, this is good because it's the next stage of the biological process. Indeed. So it's, and that, um, there's, a, there's a good comment from Opinionated Reaver who says, growth is exponential. Millimeters turn into centimeters soon enough. So when you spot a couple of millimeters on your um, millipora, in six months' time, you'll take a photo, and then suddenly, like you say, it's exponential. Bang. It's a foot across. Maybe how are wife. both of us <laughs> resisting the urge to say, is that what your wife says? <laughs> so, how are it. we resisting the urge to say that? <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. I'm... Uh, I'm innocent. I don't make those kind of comments. Yeah. We got in trouble, um, didn't we, the other day for being too rude sometimes. Did we? Yeah. Someone meant, sent a message saying that, that we were we were vulgar. Oh. I think we're yeah. vulgar. But that's, and so, um, so my reply to that was that that's just the way we are. We've got to be, and sometimes we are a bit childish to be honest, but that's just the way it is. If we try Wonderful. to be someone we're not, and I am in particular, yeah. <laughs> if we try to be something we're not, it yeah. won't be as, it won't be authentic. A, as, it won't be as authentic, exactly yes. what the right word. And yeah. there are other live streams that are, are less childish, <laughs> frankly, yeah. a bit more highbrow, that are yeah. brilliant and that you should go and check out instead. And I can't try to change. Uh, me. The, the, what, <laughs> well, you or me. And I wouldn't want to either because it's just yeah. not. Anyway, uh, there's, I think we're more or less towards the end. But there was, there was one, a... one last thing that I want, but I'll let you go, that I think is important. I really, really think is important. All right, go on. Is, our tanks affect our partners as well yeah. I, they definitely do as we mentioned earlier the freezer in your house is one third of the of freezer mm. is fish food mm. the amount of time we spend on it the amount of money we spend on it so if you want to have success in this hobby and i say this as well to people you need to bring your partner along with you they don't have to love the hobby but they have to not hate it 
So how you do that is up to you. But it is something that people mention to me all the time when they go, oh, my, my partner really hates what hates me doing mm. this. So imagine doing something you love that your partner really hates. And I know what you said earlier. You said get a new partner when I said this to you. That's exactly what I'm going to say now. <laughs> but, but to some extent, you also have to be considerate because these th yeah. they, they turn into an addiction, this hobby. It absolutely is an addiction. I see people come back and they spend money that they don't have. They put on their oh, credit yeah. card. I'm like, I'm like, this is insane. <sighs> You get finance like Klarna appearing on the yes. Coral website. It's, it's on my website. People, yeah, yeah. Which is like, if people want to do that, then that's fine. Fair but enough. you shouldn't do it, but we all do. <laughs> yes. But so, so, for example, Jamie, you know, Jamie's Reef, he has an absolutely massive tank in his living room. His yeah. wife is yeah, yeah. incredibly considerate, <laughs> considering yeah. it is a tank you can get into, but not yeah. everyone will have someone who's that. Um, consider it, and you, you, I, I know your partner's consider it. My partner is consider it. Um, it's a bit more difficult with me because it's my job. So the, the word is understanding. It's not just consider it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. But and so and so my answer to that is bin them off if they no. <laughs> you have, as I said, you have to be whatever you need to do. If your partner hates your tank, you oh. need to somehow bring them into it. And, yeah. and for example. Don't go to the fish shop every single week. One week, go, you know what? What? You, you know how, like, the last three weeks I've gone to the fish shop on a Saturday. Yeah. What would you like to do this week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so <laughs> it's, I know that's, that's an odd concept, isn't it? But I, I promise you. You'll have you to have, talk me through that afterwards. I don't really understand <laughs> yeah. that. You, you can pay for a consultation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have someone that is that you live with, it's part of their life too. <laughs> so somehow you have to bring them with you. And that's all I want to say so well there we go so before we end then because that is a, a, a words of wisdom uh, i'm going to post a video that someone's posted on uh, on the facebook group in the last half nice. hour of this fancy challenge and there's another one in the background that did make me wonder is this a shop <laughs> but either way that's a cool chalice i don't think it is a shop. that's a nice that's a nice call and that's yeah. what so i've got one of those from you that was yeah. tiny when i got it and i only had a couple of colors but it's already starting to look it's not quite as big as that, but it's starting to look like that with all these melting colors. Do you know what? Do you want to bring that back up quickly? Because this is something sure. that people don't know about these chalices. They look, What's it called? Um, jelly bean, I think. Jelly bean. Or a it. rainbow or something. They've all got funny names. Um, but that, if you look at that coral in a small scale, you go, oh, look at all the rainbow colors. What most people don't realize when they buy these little frags that are like this big is the green and orange only grows around the edge. So eventually yeah, when you've yeah. got a piece that's like this, it's mostly blue and red with an orange and green edge, but it doesn't, it won't look like that melt of colors that you normally get. No. So I just thought I'd point that out because I think a lot of people uh, get surprised. I was surprised when I realized because um, it doesn't, it doesn't grow evenly if you see what I mean. No, but it's still very cool. <laughs> so my sales of jelly beans just plummeted. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What are you saying? Uh, but there we go. So I think, was there anything else you wanted to, to add, Ryan? Any more words of wisdom or science facts? No, nope, I think I think we covered quite a lot okay. of it. I, so basically, if you're now thinking that, that this hobby is not for you, maybe it wasn't yeah. for you. <laughs> Fine. Find a different hobby. That's not a problem. But um, I would I would advise you to give it a crack first because not as yes. hard as you think. If, is, it's not as hard as you think if you if you're passionate about it and you love it this is the best thing i ever did <laughs> like the best thing i ever did and I've, you're probably you may agree or disagree you might go marrying my wife was the best thing i ever did so you can like you know sleep safe tonight but <laughs> you, you know what i mean it's like in yeah, terms yeah, yeah. of something you do on a day-to-day -day basis it's just brilliant yeah completely like, and the more people that do it the better and that, so it is, yeah. And so, all right, so I'm going to wrap up there. Next week, we're going to be doing snake oils in the hobby. And this was a suggestion from, I think it was Sean, e, Sean Ince via yeah. the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page. So if you want to suggest yeah. topics that, uh, for us to talk about for the mass debate, then post it on the, uh, the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page and we will do it. That's what's happening. So because like snake oils, I'm, I'm, I, I want to talk about that. I think that's cool. Sounds good to me. Right. All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> that, was, that was quick.